more dope. Hello, and uh, welcome to Lore Dump, the show where I take a friend of mine who hasn't experienced a particular game or franchise and walk them through the full story. I'm recording this introduction without Chase because we didn't realise just how beefy Metal Gear Solid would become and didn't originally intend on releasing it as three parts, but uh, I don't, just, just imagine there's a loud American descending into madness nearby. I'm Chase and I hate all cool things like mechs. I make the mic spike even though Monty purposely moves it far away from me. So this brings us on to Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain. Uh, however, before talking... The only one that I have... I've, I don't know anything about it. Right. But, dear fuck, do I remember just so much commentary around it when mm -hmm. it came out? Yes, I'm going to explain to you why and what a lot of that commentary was as we go, because that's about as interesting as the game itself. Oh, good. So, before talking about Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain, I want to discuss the marketing that went into this game, because Hideo Kojima is absolutely insane. Okay. Um, so, at E3 in 2012, a small indie developer called Moby Dick Studios showed off a new game titled simply The Phantom Pain. Pain. The game, yeah. <laughs> okay. the, the game's creative director, Joaquim Mogram, gave an interview to Jeff Keighley where he was covered from head to toe in bandages. You can see just him here. Uh -huh. uh, he discussed the game as being new and fresh and fun, but when Jeff Keighley pointed out that in one of the screenshots we saw some Metal Gear looking stuff, uh, the interview abruptly stopped. Now, Joaquin Mogrim is an anagram of Hideo Kojima, and this was all actually one big prank. So you'll notice here there's these lines on the Phantom Pain. People very quickly figured out that you could put Metal Gear Solid in there, and it made total sense. So, Hideo Kojima was Joaquin Mogrim this whole time. This is Kojima's interview where he came on stage as Joaquin Mogrim, sat up on the podium, started to give an interview, took off the mask, <clears throat> and revealed himself to be Hideo Kojima, where he announced that The Phantom Pain was not being made by Moby Dick Studios, it was being made by him, and that it was Metal Gear Solid V. Right? This is a perfect example of Kojima's pranking, his fuckery. Uh-huh. It's a nice bit of fun, okay? Um, now, what happened was that the prologue to The Phantom Pain was famously cut out of the game and sold as a separate title altogether called Metal Gear Solid V, Ground Zeroes. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. This was controversial because Ground Zeroes is at best a two hour experience coming out over a year before The Phantom Pain and is necessary if you want to keep up with whatever the hell is going on in The Phantom Pain. This is really important, everything that happens in this game. Okay. But it's super short. It was sold as a £30 game. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, very, very controversial. We'll be discussing a bit more about that later. At least it's not a full, like, £60. Absolutely. Um, I'll be discussing a bit more about this later when we discuss Kojima's departure from Konami. Okay. What happened here. Um, so that's where we're going to start, though. We're going to start with Ground Zeroes. So the year is 1975. It's been a year since Paz revealed herself to be a double agent. Big Boss and Kaz are running Mother Base. Things are going well until they receive word that Paz is A, still alive, and B, is being held at Omega Camp, basically Guantanamo Bay. Okay. Yeah, they plan to break into Omega Camp, bring Paz back to Mother Base, and interrogate her for information Wait, on Cypher. Wait, so she's now being held captive by Cypher? Uh, no, uh, sort of. We'll, we'll, uh, don't worry, we're going to get there. So, okay. up until this point... Solid Snake and Big Boss have been voiced by David Hayter. In Ground Zeroes and The Phantom Pain, David Hayter has been recast after 17 years in the role. Why? He's been replaced with Kiefer Sutherland. This was also very controversial because it... Was there a reason? Kojima never really gave a reason in any interviews. David Hayter has gone on the record as saying quite simply, he just didn't get the call. Um, from what I can gather, there are no hard feelings. But Kojima famously wanted to start working more with movie actors, which is why, for example, we have Norman Reedus, Mads Mikkelsen in Death Stranding, etc, etc. There's also arguably another reason, but don't worry too much about it. But for now, this is a bit of a what the fuck. Um, totally recast him as Kiefer Sutherland. Okay. Um, bit of a shame, but that's just the way it is. Basically, with Kiefer Sutherland in the role of Big Boss, uh, we break into the base, and from a distance we see this guy. Skullface. Back to the stupid fucking names! Yep, Skullface. Um, he is our big bad of Grand Zeroes and of the Phantom Pain. Uh, Skullface is in charge of a mercenary organization. So Cypher is not the big bad. Cypher is the big bad, sort of. Um, 
but Skullface like kind of works for look. So Skull <laughs> Skullface is our big bad. He's in charge of a mercenary organization called XOF. Once upon a time, he worked for Cipher and Major Zero, but has since broken away from them and is now doing his own shit. Right? So he doesn't like Major Zero. Doesn't like Big Boss. Doesn't like any of them. He's just a rogue faction. Third fucking faction. Okay. Yeah. Um, only important in this game. So don't stress too much about the overarching lore. But for the purpose of this game, this is our big big bad. Um, so, Boss finds and rescues Paz. She's barely a shell of her former self. She's weak, badly injured, horrifically tortured. Um, Omega Camp is being run by Skullface. So he's captured Paz. It's not being run by Cypher. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay, fine. Um, so, we, we find Paz. She's an absolute wreck. Was she also <clears throat> recast? Uh, no, not recast, no. So is, is Snake the only person who's been recast? Snake, oh uh, no, Ocelot's also been recast. Uh, Ocelot in this game is voiced by Troy Baker. Joel in The Last of Us, like, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah. he's now voicing Ocelot in this game. Huh. You'll note that Ocelot looks a little bit like Troy Baker as well. Okay. Not for any particular reason. Again, Kojima just wanted this to be the big, last, big, bombastic Metal Gear game. He wanted all the money, all the resources, all the big names to make it this big, grand finale. Personally, I feel like if you're going to do a big, bad finale, you get the people who, you know, made the series, but... You could absolutely agree with that, and I think it's a damn shame that David Hayter isn't in this game, personally. Kiefer Sutherland does a really good job. He's a very good boss, uh, but it's a damn shame. It, re it really is, because uh, it's David Hayter, man. Everyone loves David Hayter. You like to hear that Metal Gear, you know, that sound. Um, it's iconic, but it is what it is. So... We get Paz, uh, and we put her back on a chopper, back to Mother Base. Um, here we learn that Skullface has put a bomb, surgically sewn a bomb, into her stomach. Bad uh -oh. shit, yeah. So the doctor aboard the chopper quickly operates, pulls the bomb out, and chucks it out of the chopper before it can explode. So, hooray, we're, we're all good. Uh, he sews Paz up, she's, she's okay, she's in bad, she's bad state, but she's stable. Um, reaching Mother Base, however, they see the Mother Base is on fire. Skullbase, oh, no. yeah, Skullbase has lured Boss and Kaz away from the base with the information that Paz was being kept in Camp Omega. Oh, shit. And while they were away, his forces have attacked and destroyed Mother Base. Mother Base is, is a wreck. It's destroyed. It's fucked. Um, the operation has been successful. It's all going to hell. Outer Heaven is basically destroyed. For now. But wait, that's not all. It'll get better. <clears throat> as Kaz and Boss freak out on the chopper, needing to watch as their men dive down below, uh, Paz regains consciousness, pushes past them, and tells them that there's another bomb which was surgically sewn into her womb. Why did... I feel like they could have fixed that if she told them that earlier. Yeah, well, to be fair, she was like, I couldn't, like, you know, she could ba she barely is able to gesture. She, she doesn't explicitly say, like, it's in my womb. She's like, there's another bomb, it's in my... And she, like, touches it, and you, you get the sense of where it is. Um, to save everybody, she throws herself out of the chopper, oh. but it's too late. Goodbye. The bomb goes off, ruptures everything. The helicopter, like, it hits half the helicopter. Kaz and Boss are blown back inside the chopper, and we cut to black... And that is how Ground Zeroes ends. Big oh. cliffhanger. Yeah. That feels like it was all just a cutscene. Uh, no, 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 no. Like, the, the the whole mission in Camp Omega, Camp Omega is quite big, and it's all about, like, the freedom, and that's really the thing that comes with Phantom Pain, is the freedom of planning the operation, figuring out from afar where the enemies are. The stealth is incredible. Best gameplay in the series, worst story. That's my argument. Uh, huh. By a country mile, best gameplay. I'm going to show you a couple of examples as we go. Um, but it's still very short. Okay. Um, so... Then we go to a year later. Metal Gear Solid The Phantom Pain releases. Uh, in game, it picks up nine years later. It has the best gameplay in the series, but the worst story, in my opinion, mainly because it was unfinished. Is that a flaming horse? Um, yes. We're going to talk about that in a wee bit. Um, so sure. Specifically, I want, you to I want to really highlight this, that the game is unfinished. All right? So it's beautifully, okay. beautifully polished. What we get is... Perfect. It's absolutely well. It's not perfect. I don't really like the storytelling style here, but there is at least about two to three hours missing from the end of this game. Um, so, oh. what, yeah, what players were expecting was for the series to come full circle. This is what Kojima kind of told us was coming during early interviews. Um, it's going to link Big Boss and Outer Heaven and Solid Snake together, build up to Metal Gear One and their first confrontation, and therefore we have the full story, one big circle. Um, that's kind of what we got. But the game fell into development hell, and the story suffered as a result. Oh, no. So the year is 1984. Wait. Yes. Just out of curiosity. Mm -hmm. 
is this weird flaming skull thing uh, the Outer Heaven logo? <clears throat> it is. Yes. Okay, cool. So the year is 1984. We awaken in a hospital. Our face is all bandaged up after the blast at the end of Ground Zeroes. We've had to undergo reconstructive surgery so to the, fix all the we're burns. So we're the indie developer. Hey, we're, yeah. we're the indie developer. <laughs> and so, well, absolutely, yeah. Like, this whole idea of, like, the guy with the thing, yeah, this is very much how you look, and this is what Kojima was going for. Um, during the early uh, marketing... I love of... how he very clearly put, like, the skin of a white guy under yeah. the mask to make it look like he wasn't yeah. Asian. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, people, people, <laughs> people were fooled by this for about 24 hours. Uh, it really didn't take long for people to figure it out. And this is really the joy of Kojima's wacky marketing. Unlike... Blue box, which we'll discuss later. Uh, Kojima gives you something. He like what we got for the Phantom Pain wasn't just you know this Joaquin uh, Mogren Phantom Pain and that's the end of it. What we got was a full cinematic trailer, which was about four minutes long, with cutscenes from the Phantom Pain, but it was all purposely rejigged and changed to make it go. Is that it's sort of it's it's not Metal Gear, is it? Is it? And then it, so again. Mel Kojima is more Kojima likes people figuring out his shit. That's the joy. He doesn't like just tricking people for the sake of it. And he always gives you something. We got a great bombastic four-minute trailer. So, regardless, we're now back into the Phantom Pain. So, the year is 1984. We awaken in a hospital. Our face is all bandaged up after the blast. We've had to undergo reconstructive surgery to fix all the burns and shit. This is what we look like. Okay? Why do we have what's his name's hand? Uh, because we lost our hand in the blast. Okay, so we just got... He's now got a prosthetic robot hand. Which just happens to look identical to the guy from the last games. Yeah, again, it's, I think it's just a neat little Easter egg, and Kojima's like, look, in this world now, robotic <laughs> arms exist. Um, so let's just make it like the guy from before. The, the most important thing to note is, yes, uh, we are missing our arm, i.e. the phantom pain, phantom limb. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and we have a horn. As you can see here, uh, there's a piece of shrapnel. <laughs> yeah. There's a piece of shrapnel which gets embedded in our skull, and the doctors couldn't remove it. Uh, now, this horn is here as like a morality meter. So, as you kill people, the horn will get bigger and bigger and bigger. If you let people live, the horn will get smaller and smaller and smaller. That's right. Fucking stupid, yeah. but yeah. I also love it. It's great, right? Yeah, it's it's, it's really silly, but it's it's good shit. Because that that makes sense how that works, mm -hmm. of course. We are full of rage. Wait, did Big Boss and MG One have a horn? Maybe. What do you mean, maybe? Uh, we will discuss later. Don't worry. Uh, this, we have a horn, right? So we're full of rage and on a quest for vengeance. So we no longer call ourselves Big Boss now. We are now Venom Snake. Okay? Which is probably why... I do recognize on, that name. We discussed about, you were like, oh, I know that Snake's on the front cover. Technically he is. It's just not Solid Snake. It's Venom Snake. Okay. Right, so Big Boss has now renamed himself Venom Snake. Uh, so despite the fact that he had accepted the name Big Boss, he's now like, nah, fuck that. Yeah, pretty much. He accepted the name Big Boss for all of like five minutes in Peace Walker. Um, and then after all of his men got blown to shit and he lost his arm, he's become this angry, like, villain version of Snake is sort of the idea. Um, so there's a guy in the bed next to Snake in the, in the hospital, also heavily bandaged, calling himself Ishmael. Much like the Ishmael from Moby Dick, Moby Dick Studios, who were making the Phantom Pain. Right? Okay. It's all, it's all, don't worry too much about the meta stuff here, but that's, that's just kind of a bit of a, a joke. So this is Ishmael. Uh, Ishmael is also voiced by Kiefer Sutherland, because why not? Um, so, huh. yeah, so the hospital gets attacked by soldiers. A small child with red hair um, and a gas mask who looks a lot like a young psychomantis and a man on fire that can control the shapes of flames attack. Um, Ishmael and Snake escape the hospital while the man on fire Did Psycho them. Mantis have red hair? He did. Well, he was bald when we met him in Metal Gear Solid 1, but this is young Psycho Mantis. Okay. I'm not, yeah, I'm, this is young Psycho Mantis. I wasn't sure yeah. if, like, we were meant to recognize that purely off of a gas mask. Yeah, no, uh, it's, it's Kojima's confirmed. Is he flying? Uh, yeah, well, he's levitating because he's Psycho Mantis. Okay, okay. Levitates. Yeah. Um, so these guys and a bunch of soldiers attack the hospital, clearly there to assassinate Big Boss, like, while he's weak. We... Escape the hospital with Ishmael while the man on fire chases them on horseback and he makes the unicorn it makes a unicorn out of the horse by giving it like fire wings and a horn and he summons like a uh, fire whale oh, and that's where you yeah, yeah. It's it's flaming Moby Dick. Flaming Moby Dick, yeah. <laughs> um and so so it looks like a unicorn. Um that's basically all that happens there. Okay. Um, anyway, we cut to a month later. Um, in that time, Snake is reunited with, with Kaz. There's a mission where you go and save him, but we've reunited with Kaz, who is now missing his arm and part of his leg. 
because in the explosion at the start. So Kaz also bitter and angry as fuck and wants to get revenge. And okay. we also um, partner up with Ocelot. Finally. My boy. Yeah. So Ocelot's now finally joined the team um, in the fight against Cypher and the Patriots. So Snake himself now has a snazzy new bionic arm that can do things like shoot rocket fists and grab <laughs> enemies. Uh, yeah, it's really dumb, but it's really great. Um, I'm into it. You upgrade it as you go. It's good. Um, now, in the nine years we've been in a coma, um, Ocelot, basically, on, 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 on orders of the boss, if anything bad were to ever happen to them, um, has gone away and he's managed to rebuild Mother Base. And he's renamed them Diamond Dogs to stay under the radar. Oh, I recognize that name too. So Diamond Dogs I feel like is there's a lot of this that, like, I... Because this was about the time when, like, Metal Gear came into my pop culture, like... Yeah. Surround my peripheral. So I feel like there's a lot of, like, bits and pieces of this game that I'm vaguely familiar with. I just know none of the context, so none of it means anything to me. So the overall kind of goal of the game is to do up Mother Base, increase your organization, and get revenge on Skullface. Um, a lot of the missions are kind of story-less. It's not linear like the yeah, other games. Yeah, I was about to say, this doesn't feel like it actually has a core story. Yeah, so there are two big open-world maps, uh, one in Afghanistan and one open in... Open-world is your favorite. I hate you. Uh, <laughs> but actually, these are okay. They're not huge. They're, they're, they're both big enough that you get a bit of freedom. But uh, yeah, so one in Afghanistan and one in an unmarked location in Africa. Uh, each mission okay. opens with Snake being choppered in he goes and like rescues an informant or collects some equipment and then you chop her back out so that's what a lot of this this game is is a lot of these sort of missions getting resources getting back out the joy comes from the freedom you have with the stealth mechanics Kojima has gone overboard with just how much preparation, how much freedom. You can use <laughs> your rocket fist. You can Fulton soldiers out in gameplay. So oh. you, you, you attach the balloon, you knock them out, attach the balloon to them, and then they go like, whoa. And then if they, they, some of them might become conscious when they do, and they go, hello? And they go, ah! <laughs> That's again, yeah. Um, you, can, you get to work with companions. And they go up to a plane that is definitely stealthy. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. And then they get like brought back. That's how you bring people back to Mother Base. Um, you you get to work with companions like D Diamond Horse. So you bring in a horse and you get to ride the horse around to get to each location. God um, damn it! There's like horse stealth where like it trots. What? Yeah, or like you you move to the side and you can make the horse shit and then enemy and then like you go and hide and the enemy will be like ooh and come over and look at the shit and then you get to sneak up behind it. It's just good stuff. It's just it's what just the fuck? it's ridiculous but so deep and so clever. Um, you also get. Uh, Diamond Dog, who is a dog that you find as a little cub, a little like husky or whatever, uh, and its eyes being like gouged out. So you give it an eye patch, and it becomes your best pal. And God, you're, like, yeah, he sniffs, sniffs stop out, it. sniffs out the enemies and stuff. It's it's just it's all really good stuff. It's just um, snake the dog. It's, it legit, it's just snake the dog, and you get to give him treats and fuss him and stuff, and he gives you love, and you get a little bond, and if your bond's better, like his range grows. It's just good shit. Um, I kind of. <laughs> yeah, so so the gameplay, amazing. Uh, story, not as good, because a lot of the story is told to you through... It, it's, it's kind of told to you through these podcasts, radio tapes that you pick up, and it'll be... Th it, 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 big reveals will happen. So, like, Kaz and Ocelot, you, you'll learn, for example, that, I don't know, uh, Kaz and Ocelot... Um, are bumming. Really hate each other deep down, right? For argument's oh. sake, they, they don't really, right? Oh, okay, yeah. um, okay. I thought you thought was a reveal. No, yeah. So no, there's there's like a bit of like a mutual rivalry between them, and that rivalry is developed purely through these cassette tapes, where you just hear the two of them talk to each other. And um, the Kazahira creating burgers stuff that I told you back when we <laughs> met him. That's all through podcast tapes. We learn about what Major Zero's been up to this whole time <laughs> I, through podcast. I tapes. love just the. I love like imagining this like super sullen, really grumpy gruff military dude yeah finding solace in making burgers <laughs> legit yeah it's great um so yeah and, and particularly the ai is really advanced so it's really clever and it's really dumb in the most metal gear way pro possible and the example that i have is <laughs> so your cardboard box comes back you can upgrade the cardboard box uh, to do things like have a picture of a woman on it and the soldier will walk up and he'll go like, oh, and become all googly eyed. Uh, and if like when he sees it, so then we can like jump out the box and knock him out with one hit. It's good shit. And uh, you can change the picture to be like a soldier, and he'll salute it. It's it's yeah, it's it's great. 
Um, I hate. It. Wait, does he <laughs> think that it's real? Yeah, he thinks that's real. Why? I don't know, because he's it's the AI, you know. Can he not see the fucking shipping label <laughs> right to the corner of it? So, so like, and that's the thing, because on top of all this silly stuff, the AI is also very advanced. So, like, they will be able to hunt for you if you if you haven't washed. Uh, there's a shower on Mother Base. If you haven't washed in like four missions, they'll be able to smell you. Yeah, it's, oh, it's a stinky snake. It's ridiculously advanced, and yet he's added all these silly little gimmicks into it, and it makes it so so fun. And, okay, anyway. that's really cool. That's so cool. yeah, like it wouldn't be the same if it was really they were all really dumb, but they're really smart until you play with them, and that's the joy. So the, a lot of the story really is Ocelot, Kaz, and Snake just being three bros. Um, like really is just With three bros. A random naked woman behind uh, them. Yeah, I'm gonna discuss her in a wee minute. Um, Why is she naked? I'm gonna tell you all about her in a minute. Okay. Uh, so honestly, it's where a lot of the fun of the game comes from. Again, in the story, uh, like if you visit Mother Base on the player's birthday, they'll hold a party for you and act like it's your birthday. Oh and it's my like, god! Yeah, and like Ocelot comes out with the cake. He's like, "Snake, you know, here you go. You know, blah blah blah." Um, it's, it's all it's all good fuck? shit. Um, you can get lost <laughs> in this game for hours and. Hours. People I, have put like 400 hours into it. I think I'm on like 150 myself. I um, love yeah. this. This is hysterical. It's, it is a shame, however, that of course, because Kojima works best when he's working with your linear, cultivated stories. Yeah. And we don't get that really here. It's like you'll do four missions where you rescue a random person and then Ocelot will call you up on the radio and say, Hey boss, uh, there's this really important official and he's got like plot narrative stuff to tell you and you rescue him and then there's a cutscene, right? But there's it's very rare that you get big bombastic moments. Um, they are there, and that's what I'm going to walk you through. But that's honestly the reason why this is probably going to be a little bit shorter than the others. Okay. Um, because the stuff that we learn here isn't there's not loads. So and not until the very end. So yeah, so so it's good fun. Now first, let's talk about the naked woman. Yeah, let's talk about Quiet. So this is her name, Quiet. Oh. Quiet. Yeah. She didn't choose to be quiet. Quiet is a badass sniper. She's also a mute. Uh, she also doesn't wear any clothes. Um, and there is an explanation for this. Do you want to know what the explanation is? Yes. I I feel like I'm going to be really angry at this. Yeah, you are. But tell me. Quiet, Chase. The reason why Quiet doesn't wear any clothes is because Quiet can breathe through her skin. <laughs> I mean, that's it. For some reason, I'm less angry about than I thought I would. What? No! I feel, like I, I feel like I should be more angry at this yes, than I am. Yes, because first off, she's still wearing clothes. B, Frankie's seen this picture. Um, she, she highlighted to me that the, the she's still wearing, like, tights and underwear and stuff. Um, she's wearing gloves. That glove ain't, ain't letting her breathe through shit. Like, what a ridiculous does, concept. Does she not breathe through her mouth? She doesn't breathe through her mouth. She only breathes through her skin. Well, I mean... This isn't relevant like to enough, the plot. That looks like enough skin to breathe Yeah, but this through. isn't relevant to the plot. It's not... Re this doesn't come back. This is just the excuse to have her running around. And also, the game's really overtly sexual with her. She'll, like, go and, like, like oh, I can moan tell. and make... Yeah, oh, I can and tell already. There's a whole bit where, like, she sees rain for the first time. Um, Wait, and what? she like Yeah, like, because she's in Africa, I think. Oh, no, she's in Afghanistan. She's just never seen... Like, it doesn't matter. She has, she's never seen rain, Is right? it trying to imagine that... It never rains in Afghanistan. That's this, yeah. So, so Weather yeah. doesn't exist in Afghanistan. So she sees You're rain. here, folks. And she's like, oh my god. And she like, like, lies down in it. And she like, starts like, washing herself. It's really gratuitous. Really, really gratuitous. Yeah, not um, a fan. Yeah, not a massive fan, honestly. Kojima got a lot of flack for this. Um, I wonder why. To which he responded, because well, well, people saw her before the game came out. Um, to which he responded when, when you find out the real reason why she's dressed the way she is, you're going to feel really bad about making all these mean comments. The reason is that she breathes through her skin. <laughs> <laughs> that is the most, like, neckbeard, like... Legit. Yeah. Like, oh, I need a reason to make my sexy girl wear no clothes. It's because her skin is her breathing holes. Yeah. <laughs> It's just not relevant to anything, really. Um, there are theories that she is related to the end, um, the old sniper from Metal Gear Solid 3. Why? Um, just because she's a badass sniper, and he also breathes through his skin. Oh, um, does it? Wait, what? Or something. They're both, like, photosynthesoids or something. It's got, it's got, like, a name. Honestly, none of this matters. It is a throwaway thing in one little podcast tape that you find, um, and it's not even confirmed that she is related to the end. It's just something that fans theorize. I like that idea that she is, but it doesn't I... matter. I mean, 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, it's shite. So Quiet is actually our first boss fight. Um, we, we don't know why she's in Afghanistan, but defeating her and taking her back to Mother Base, she finds some respect for Boss and starts accompanying him on missions as backup. She's great, uh, there's a lot of sexual tension between the two, it's fab, but it's really Who problematic. Who is there not sexual tension between with Big Boss? Legit, everyone wants to fuck Big Boss. Um, so we I also mean, can, find... Can you blame him? Have you seen that beard? Have you seen that eye patch? Um, <laughs> we also find Huey Emmerich, Otacon's dad from Peace Walker. He looks... Um, yeah. Younger. Uh, sure. I mean, it's, this is the first time you've seen him properly, remember. Like, Peace Walker was all a bit... You know, that image I showed you was like a render. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so we find Hugh Emmerich once again. Uh, he has been taken prisoner by Cypher after Mother Base got blown to hell. To make another Renzios. fucking Metal Gear? Um, and is being housed in an aircraft hangar, hangar. And yes, he is creating another Metal God, Gear. God. D- <sighs> this Metal Gear chase is called... Can nobody else make Metal Gears? No. Is it only this one dude? This is Sahelanthropus, the Metal Gear. It's what? Why does it have a penis? Metal Gear. Um, yes, it has. Yes, uh, the, 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 the real gun is Why it's does it have a penis? Um, I'm surprised that you're not shocked at the fact that this is clearly the most advanced Metal Gear of the series. I mean... <laughs> Look at it. I, it's, it's the biggest. I'll tell you that much. Uh, it's huge. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Mm-hmm. It's a fucking Eva. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a fucking Eva. Uh, I, I, I'm still kind of just shocked at the penis gun, but <laughs> I'm a bit stuck on that. I'm not going to lie. Um, inevitably, of course, that it's them right now when it does go, and then it shoots from his crotch. Yeah. God. Um, but yeah. So this is Sahelanthropus, the Metal Gear of this game. Sure. Uh, Snake rescues Huey. But... I am, I am, to be very clear, I am very angry that this is more advanced mm. than the one from MG1. I'm just tired <laughs> I'm just yeah. to, act, to, <laughs> We're to, there. to check is this referred to as a Metal Gear yes uh, I don't know because I don't think so, I could have sworn that in MG1 it is like very specifically stated to be the first Metal Gear yeah but like retcons in it <laughs> so anyway so, so we so we rescue Huey um, why let him die <laughs> let him die but, we, I, Otakon's probably already born so when we find Huey... Also, on and oh, unrelated, yes, yes. I, I thought of this I thought of this uh, during a break, mm. uh, that Otakon yep. is uh, one of the biggest anime conventions in the US. Oh, is that actually... Uh, otaku, right? OtakuCon. Yeah, it's yeah. OtakuCon. Well, that's the... I, yeah. I feel like that absolutely wasn't intentional, mm. but feels like a very funny coincidence. Um, so, so, yeah, Snake rescues Huey all good and well, uh, but there's another surprise waiting for us in this aircraft hangar. The boss AI was also retrieved by Cypher, and it's revealed... Well, yeah, that's because they fucking assumed that an, that a smart programmer would only put their code on one fucking ma- computer. We destroyed the computer! What about the cloud? Mm. No, 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 no. It's not the cloud. It's like, it is the barrel which has it inside it. The singular... It is the... So they, they made it. zero backups of this. Yeah. Why? Just because it was Doctor Strangelove, in it? She's a wacky character. <laughs> and she is a shit scientist, apparently. Uh, so, yeah. So, the boss AI is also in this hangar. Um, it was retrieved by Cypher, and it's revealed that Major Zero didn't was in... did Snake ins- break it? No. No. Snake didn't break it. It got into the Peace Walker and drowned it. So, it's just been like... Oh, of course. It was waterproof for yeah. plot reasons. So, regardless, it's here. And it turns out that Zero was inspired by this later... To create oh, the Zero's Patriot still AIs. fucking around. Yeah, Zero's Zero's not in the game. We never see Zero, but out of yeah, out of the yeah. So basically, he was like inspired by this to create I feel the Patriot like, AI. I feel like he should have been a big bad instead of making new people like Skullface and. I agree, but do bear in mind that the whole idea was that Major Zero isn't like a sort of villain. He's he's just a. Well, if he's the one who man. made the Patriots, then he should be a big mwah. Oh, yeah, I wish that they did that, but they don't. It's Skullface instead. Because if you're going to go full circle, mm. why add a new villain right before you go full circle? Don't why not stress. just have the one who Don't makes... stress about Skullface, trust me. Do not stress about Skullface. Uh. He's, a, he's a nothing villain. Um, so, yeah. So, I can so, fucking tell with that name. So we bring Huey back to Mother Base. That is the worst image I have ever seen. Where Snake, Ocelot, and... Kaz all interrogate him and by interrogate I mean torture 
It's vicious. Uh, Miller specifically is Wait. just so full of rage and vengeance, they think that Huey was the one who sold out their location to Cypher back in Ground Zeroes. Was he? Spoiler, he is. Absolutely. Oh, what a kind... Yeah, that's a major spoiler. We don't learn that until, like, way towards the end, but I'm going to tell you now, just so I can tell you some interesting stuff about Huey, because Huey is a piece of shit. Uh, Huey gets interrogated, like, at least four times during the game. Now, unfortunately, only, like, two of those torture scenes are actually in cinematics. The others generally <laughs> you are... You fucking sadist. You want to see them I all? I want to see Huey get tortured. He's a piece <laughs> of shit. So, between Ground Zeroes and the Phantom Pain, uh, Huey and Dr. Strangelove from Peace Walker became romantically involved while captured <gasps> is by Dr. a Is Dr. Strangelove's Otakon's mom? Dr. Strangelove is Otakon's mom. God damn it. <laughs> when, so, I, while captured by Skullface, they shagged, Skull, uh, Strangelove became pregnant, they gave birth to a kid. Wait, is Strangelove still alive as well? You're gonna find out. So... They're romantically involved. Um, ultimately, they had a kid, Otacon, and when Otacon turned seven or eight, Huey, the piece of shit, wanted to use Otacon as a test subject to pilot the Sahelanthropus because his body was so small. So the big thing, the, the thing about Sahelanthropus is that they have designed Sahelanthropus' cockpits to be so small that a full-grown man cannot pilot it. That's Why? really important. Why? Because. I feel like that's <laughs> literally just to have Otacon sit in it. Uh, and this yeah. just, again, makes every Metal Gear engineer in the series a shitty engineer. Yeah. But Otacon, particularly Huey's a bad engineer. He's a wank. So Huey wanted to do that. He wanted to use his son as a test subject. For stupid reasons. Yeah. So Strange Love thought that that was fucking weird uh, and managed to send Would Otacon... Would you say that she thought it was strange? A... A... Um, so she so she managed to send Otacon away to America, like Clandestine style. She managed to like ship him off to someone. I thought they that were she all already in America. No, no, no. This is all in Afghanistan. So Skullface has a base in Afghanistan. Okay. Right? Um, so she managed to ship Otacon away to America. Huey, as revenge, locked Strange Love inside the boss's AI chamber, where she suffocated to death. Wait, the AI. Champ yes, the so barrel. Think, yes, it's the barrel. So think, it is literally it. a barrel. It is about the size of like this room, um, or yeah, about this room. In the center is like the AI core with all the computery things, and there's like a thing around it you can like get around it if you need to. Um, he locked her in there, and she suffocated to death and died. I and later they find her body. Yes, yeah. L later on they find Feels her body. Feels poetic. She died with her best friend. Exactly, it is poetic that she died there, but also fuck Huey. Snake also meets this kid, Eli, while on a mission. What's up, Liquid? Absolutely. That you could not make that more obvious. In yeah. Your yeah. I feel like that, no, they, they don't try to hide that it. hair is too obvious. Yeah, like it's the only like Final Fantasy ass hair in the series. To be fair, so we saw him in one of the trailers, and people were like, "It's one of two people. It's either a very young Liquid Snake, or it's a very young Raiden." Because if you remember, Raiden was also a child, oh, child soldier, yeah. um, and we didn't know for sure. But it's Eli. It's Liquid Snake. We we know that for a fact. Um, so yeah, he's on a mission. He finds a cabal of child soldiers, orphans of war, and brings them back to Mother Base. This is how the recruitment of child soldiers began. Do you remember Metal Gear 2? The little child soldiers would pop up and give you little tips and tricks? I do, yeah. This is where this all begins. Okay. Um, yeah, so like, and they, they are, they're, they're like imprisoned and captured, he rescues them, and this is like where the plan begins for that. Eli is the leader of these child soldiers. But he soldiers. doesn't, like, rescue them. He just continues to make them be child soldiers. Y yeah. Which yeah. is still just as fucked up. Yeah. It's it's a little bit grey in how they handle it, in the sense that, yes, objectively, this is all bad. Were they working for themselves, or were they working for somebody else? The child soldiers were just working for themselves. They were so, just doing their own so, thing. Yeah. so, he took the soldiers without borders and gave them borders. No, because it's so, like... No, 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 no. So, he gave them borders... <laughs> In his organization, they said, he said, oh no, you are unbeholden to any nation. I'm going to give you a nation and it's mine. Fuck you. So it's really important to highlight that um, the rest of the children want to go with Big Boss. Eli does not. And Eli's their leader. So there's a little bit of friction there. Because he knows that it's his daddy. Yes, absolutely. Well, I know Eli straight up knows himself. immediately. He knows immediately that this is like... The Patriots off prior to this have like injected him with it and released him into the wild. Boss finds him in Afghanistan, in Africa rather. He finds him in Africa, and he's like, "Fuck." Um, it's kind of like a Heart of Darkness, um, Lord of the Flies situation, really, where he's leading these kids. Um, so the kids want to go back because they're like, "Well, there's food, there's drink, there's shelter. They're going to look after us." Eli's like, "I immediately know who you are. I do not trust you." Wait, why does he know? 
who Big Boss is. It's just supposed to be like this, like, I recognize you. Also, why does he not trust Big Boss because he knows that Well, because he was experimented on people and injected with Big Boss's boss's blood, like, against his will. Like, he didn't want this. Wait, 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 wait. Is he a clone of Big Boss, or was he injected, or was he a random kid injected with Big Boss's blood? So if you're... I don't remember for sure, so this might be wrong. Please do correct me if I'm wrong. My understanding is that this is a random child of war who, years before the Phantom Pain, as, like, a very small child, was taken by Zero, and very similarly with David, Solid Snake, and they were both injected with, like, genes, and they were experimented on, so they would grow up to become, like, all the genetic brilliance of Big Boss. Oh! Right? Don't question the science, because I cannot help you okay, there, right? So but it's... keep this clear. Okay. I think that's where we're I've at. I've been going this whole series thinking that they are clones. I might be wrong, but the, the idea is that they're referenced to be clones, um, but it's, it's honestly... I, I think that I'm probably misremembering it, so don't take my word as gospel here. Um, and I'm sorry for that. Uh, but I remember okay. trying to look into it and getting slightly confused. Because Eva refers to Metal Gear Solid 4 as like, I carried you in my womb so it's to, to Snake. So it's all a little bit like, I think maybe Eli was a child of war and Snake was grown from Eva in a test tube or whatever. And, and it's, I don't remember exactly. But just all you need to know is this is Liquid. Liquid's raging. He knows that Big Boss is Big Boss. And he's like, fuck you. I don't like you because I know that... Like, you're, he thinks that Big Boss's people experimented on him and turned him into the man he... The kid he is. Even though it was Cypher. Even though it was Cypher, yes. So he, he just doesn't know about the fracture. Yes. Um. So eventually, after growing Diamond Dogs in strength, the time comes to confront Skullface. What the fuck is this cowboy mask? This yeah. whole cowboy outfit. This is his look. He's, he's, look. Try, he's trying to be Oc- He's a bad Ocelot cosplayer. Oh, I thought it was more like the Lone Ranger, no? Well, I mean, yeah, but Ocelot's <laughs> our only cowboy of the series oh, so, so far. Yeah. So it's just a bad Ocelot cosplay. Um, so, yeah. So I we, hate that fucking Highwayman mask. So he bra- we break into his facility, but get captured. And while held at gunpoint, Skullface and Snake jump into a jeep to drive over to the launch pad where his Metal Gear is about to power up. They look very peaceful for, you know, enemies. Yes. Yes, they do. So... Okay, I feel like I've I've hit a a point of contention in the... uh, A personal gripe of mine. I don't know if it's a general contention. I'm going to explain in a minute. So, Skullface and Snake jump to a jeep. They're heading over. While in the jeep, Skullface explains his full plan. This is Bond villain plan time, right? So, first, he can't get Sahelanthropus to work because he can't, doesn't have any kids, can't fit them inside. The, yeah. Um, Why? The, his, whole, his initial plan, he, didn't want, he, was, he doesn't want to use AIs like in Peace Walker because he thinks that AIs are a bunch of bullshit that Cypher wants to do. And it's like, I'm not like Major Zero. I'm not about the AI people only, right? Um, I mean, that's smart at least. So, he has recruited and, and, and raised a young psychomantis to use his psychic powers <laughs> to essentially bring the thing <laughs> to life. Fucking psychomantis again, yeah. dude. So Psychomantis is like able to bring it to life through his powers, but nobody's ever inside the suit. Which is why if I if I do breaking the fourth wall something and going back, you'll notice a little Psychomantis next to it. Oh shit, so there is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right? So that's the situation. Second, it turns out that Skullface has discovered a parasite <laughs> which can be programmed to kill you if you speak a certain language. Not only does it kill you, but it spreads through the use of that language. He is pr- managed to program the parasite for English and wants to use it to wipe out the Western English speaking world. I don't remember which country he's from. He's not from like America or anything. I'm, um, and I, that's our deal. I have. Feel I, free to ask the questions, ma'am. No, I have, z- I have zero <laughs> questions. I have zero <laughs> questions. I have conceivably about an hour's worth of rants that are oh, yeah. generating themselves yeah. in my brain. But. Frankly, I'm just going to cut it off as, so far, mm. possibly the stupidest fucking part of the series. Um, okay, so that's totally fair. I also think it might be one of my, f- sorry, it might be one of my favorites. Why? Why? Um, Why? Because Why? it's as Bond villain as you can get. Find a parasite, I, program it to, because he hates America, hates I the UK, guess. hates the West. It's like, I just hate all the English speaking colonial fucks. that is. And it's like, his, his, his. His, well, his plan is ridiculous, um, and the size behind it is ridiculous. Uh, the the I intention like is is lovely, and I really like that he's got like a reason for what to do. His 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 plan and his goals are very much aligned with his own personal philosophy. Here, it's not just I'm going to nuke another country. It's like I just fucking hate the English speaking world. 
Wait, so so are we is is he going to ignore the fact that most other countries mm-hmm. also uh teach English in school? Uh yeah. and if even one word, I'm pretty sure that probably yeah. and don't quote me on statistics here, 60 to 70% of the world has at least the vaguest grasp on the basics mm-hmm. of English or yep. is taught it in school. So he's just saying, I'm going to wipe out most of the world. Yeah, he doesn't give a Even fuck. Even if it's not the actual, like, people he's aiming for. Because his thought process is, like, eliminate the language, eliminate the history, eliminate everything about them, wipe them off the map, and then we rebuild with new languages and new people and new ways of thinking, right? It's very dumb, but it's awesome. I really like this plan, as stupid as the parasite so is. Just just one question mm. while we're looking at this image. Yeah. Uh, so as uh, s- fucking stupid cowboy yeah. is... Uh, Sitting there. Does Snake have a gun? Um, no. Why? Well, no, he's got a gun maybe, like, in his lap or whatever, but, like, he's also so, surrounded by all his men. Like, Okay, you know, so Skullface, are you dead. saying that Big Boss wouldn't be willing to make a sacrifice of himself for the good of 70% of the fucking world? I, I, I okay, so do, do you want to see, do you want to see it get stupider? No. <laughs> no, <laughs> so, I don't. So... This is his plan with the parasite, right? Quiet used to work for Skullface and was infected with the parasite, which is why she's mute. Skullface has three vials, each containing the parasite. Just these three. Okay? Wait, out of curiosity, mm-hmm. did you say that he uh, he, he just found it? Just randomly? Uh, no, so he found... Uh, okay, so there's a character which I've, I've not written about here called Code Talker, Code Talker, who is a Native American. I don't remember where he finds it. He finds it somewhere in Africa. Code Talker has been doing research into the parasite because he found it years ago. Um, Code Talker is... Ba- Skullface finds Code Talker. Code Talker tells him about it and points him to, like, the cave or whatever it is that he finds So it, what I'm he hearing is that this is the Resi virus. It's... This is just the Resi virus. Yeah. This is just... <laughs> The amount of things that... It's in Africa he finds it too as well. Yeah, so that's my right. point, yeah. is it's just the f- <laughs> CT letter virus. Yeah. God damn. So we also learn that the man on fire from the game's opening yeah. uh, also works for Skullface. He is also the resurrected corpse of Colonel Volgan from Metal Gear Solid 3, the villain of Metal Gear Solid 3. He can't speak, can't what? really think. He's what? just a tyrant that what? marches around and is fueled... By blind rage and a quest for vengeance against Snake for killing him. He doesn't speak. What? Yeah. Why? I'd also like to point out that Skullface doesn't reveal this to us. This is revealed to us in the form of the podcast cassette tapes. What's the problem? (laughs) What? What? Yeah, he's the man on fire. The thing I have, (laughs) this one just feels wholly unnecessary. Like, what does this add? Yeah. What, what, does does, what does this add for this to be Volgan? Well, the argument is that it's thematic because the the, the whole but thing it's is about not. it's the whole game's about vengeance. So there's a man o- literally on fire, literally fueled by revenge. Okay, but if you can't, but villains. if you can't talk, and if we're getting this in the form of a fucking cassette yeah. tape, yeah. then we are getting nothing of a theme. Like if if they were going to make this a theme thing, then mm-hmm. we need cutscenes with fire Volgan. We do, we do. Later on, you get a boss fight with Volgan. I'm just telling, I'm telling you this now, right? So that because it's it's all so weirdly out of order. You do fight Volgan. You beat Volgan by basically dousing him with water and blowing him up. Um, <laughs> you also get a water pistol, but that water pistol isn't very effective against him. Um, you can use it just to spray enemies for for a fucking giggle. Um, and when you do, there is a cut scene where Volgan, um, like the flames are gone. He and he's like, oh, and you see it's Volgan in like beautiful, you know, high definition PS4 detail. He sees Snake, and there's like a moment of like clarity before he dies not clarity he gives him a very odd look um i'm choosing my words very carefully people who have played the games will know why i'm doing that at this point um but he he, he, just a moment of just like before he dies okay i'm gonna explain why that happens later but for now so you do get it in a cutscene now i'd also like to highlight that the cutscenes are generally very short almost as a direct response to the criticism that Kojima got from Metal Gear Solid 4 because all the cutscenes were at least 20 minutes long. And it's almost like he went, okay, well, I'm going to make it where gameplay is the focus, story is on the back burner, you can find the story if you want to. And for me, that's that's not the game I want. Uh, The gameplay is phenomenal. 
I just would. I just I like Kojima when he's curated I mean, and he's focused. You know my opinions on games, yeah. and that <clears throat> gameplay is always secondary to story. So yeah, big thumbs down to this. For for um, for this for the game the, the gameplay that we got, I would argue almost makes it worth it because the gameplay is so good. But it is a shame because there's so much interesting stuff that is not really explored to the depth that it should be, like in other games. So anyway. So, however, bizarrely, um, Skullface's big villain speech isn't long enough to carry the whole Jeep journey to the launch pad. Um, so, Snake doesn't <laughs> say a word this entire time. I'm guessing Kiefer Sutherland's budget ran out, right? Um, <laughs> so, this whole time, Skullface is monologuing, and Snake is just sitting like he like he is in his picture, just going silent. whilst he has a gun. Whilst he has a gun, doesn't say anything. So, <laughs> well, so Skullface stops his monologue, and the Jeep just keeps driving for like three full minutes. <laughs> <laughs> While the Phantom Pain's theme tune plays over it, and it's not as epic as the really tall ladder in Snake and Snake Eater, <laughs> purely because the theme tune isn't as good, um, and it's it's just really awkward. And then so the soul face isn't like he puts his finger down, and the two of them just sit and just rock with the jeep while it's like driving you over and you're like what just cut this that's <laughs> cut me to the launch pad that's kind of hilarious from it's, a meme perspective though. Uh, absolutely it's hilarious from a meme perspective it's it's very like a lot of people criticize it as being a bit of shit it's like oh no thinks he's is, doing the ladder. that is 100 percent shit yeah it's but not it's like kind of a hilarious shit because it's just so bad because with the ladder you've got lots to think about and you are controlling him and it's like it's question, Snake badass. has kojima recognized how many bad decisions are in this game? No, he never. No, he never highlights. He never really talks about this game um, anymore. Because uh, probably part of his NDA, he can't really talk about anything to do with the development of this. So even creative choices, it might be a breach of his contract. Kojima's very like, yeah. I'm sure this is the case, and I'm sure that we'll get into this later. But it feels like Kojima had very little control of this game. I would argue that I don't know the ins and outs particularly of his control over the game itself. Like comparatively, this wasn't this one doesn't feel directed by Kojima. I it would, feels yeah. like produced by Kojima, but yeah. not directed. Um, a lot of these choices are Kojima, and you can see it down to like the horse pooping, and the guard comes over and looks at it. You know, <laughs> but a lot of this stuff it is. It's I mean, I, I'm I'm trying to keep this as streamlined as possible, but. It's it's a very rocky haphazard game. So okay. eventually we get to Sahelanthropus. Okay, um, Psychomantis appears. Big ol' robotic. Powers up Sahelanthropus, uh, but he's done with everyone's shit. Doesn't say a word either, uh, but basically sends Sahelanthropus on a rampage. He, it's because if he speaks English, he'll die. Ah, uh, fair. Um, so first off, in a cutscene, Sahelanthropus speaks with his mind. Uh, we get into a boss fight with Sahelanthropus. We beat it right, and in a cutscene, uh, Sahelanthropus chop off his robotic. Goes rogue. And crushes Skullface. Wait, it's, it, the robot... <laughs> it steps on him. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. The robot goes rogue. Yeah, well, no, Psycho, Psycho Mantis goes rogue. Okay. He's done being controlled, and he's like, just fucking kill everybody, Robo. Okay, yeah. that's... Yeah. I was about to go on a whole tirade about how this thing didn't have a fucking yeah. AI, and that was the whole point. Um, it's also referenced, I think, in, in passing, that the idea is that... Um, so Psycho Mantis, it's not that he has full control over it, it's that he... Uh, y- the way his powers work with Sahelanthropus is related to emotional states. Skullface is very cold, very clinical, very planning. Eli is about at this moment, and Eli is just so full of rage, and he's just such a little fucking I am angry all the time. So Psychomantis almost accidentally taps into this rage and makes Sahelanthropus go on a rampage. Uh, it's kind of how it's explained, right? Um, yeah, that makes a surprising amount of sense, right? It's, it's kind of, <laughs> little things like that are kind of neat because again, Eli wants revenge against, but it's vengeance, 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 right? He wants revenge against Big Boss because he thinks that you made me into this, you experimented on me, what he yeah. did. Uh, so all of this stuff, right? Um, it crushes Skullface, steps on him. Um, we fight it, defeat it. Finally, Kaz, Ocelot, and Huey Emrick all arrive in a <laughs> chopper. Worst boy. Worst boy. And discuss Which what Which is to shocking, given that his son is best boy. Legit. Um, that's literally, it's, it's almost like Kojima's like, I'm going to make the anti-Otacon and his father. Um, so they discuss what to do with Skullface. Skullface isn't dead. He's just, his, his legs are crushed and he's lying there like, oh God, uh. He's like, he, he might survive, but... So they also, discuss what to do. love that he hates English-speaking people mm. while he speaks English. Oh, for sure. I mean, Big Boss wouldn't understand a word he says, to be fair. Um, otherwise, because Big Boss doesn't really speak other languages. Okay, but um, it still means that he would kill himself. True, true. Um, actually, I think Big Boss understands Russian. 
But he, regardless, yeah. <laughs> what? Um, well, yeah, I think he learned Russian just as part of his training. Sure. Uh, for the Cold War. But anyway, so it doesn't matter, right? Skullface is there. He's lying. There's like, uh. Um, they, they did discuss what to do with him. Miller's like, let's fucking kill him. Let's fucking, I want to piss on his corpse. I'm ready to fucking take a dump on his face. Um, boss is, <laughs> boss is kind of like, maybe we should be better than this. What if we just leave him? He's probably going to die. Let's leave his fate into Go the Go make hands. a fucking burger, Miller. Yeah, legit. Uh, Kaz is like, oh, fine. He's like pissed. And basically the two of them come to an understanding. So what they do is, Miller's got his shotgun. They take turns blowing off Skullface's legs with the shotgun. He's already been crushed. And they're like, boom, boom, boom. The mentality is, you took my arm. You took my arm and Let's my leg. Let's not kill him. Let's torture him yeah. instead. Let's torture him instead. Like, and the idea is like, you know, like eye for an eye. You took my arm. We take your legs. Sort of idea, right? Uh, we'll so take your that. legs that were already taken by the robot. Taken. Um, so they, they do that. Uh, they, they literally just blow his legs off. But they decide to uh, leave him like that alive and in the fate of whatever happens that next. That seems like a really stupid decision. However, Huey, desperate to prove he's loyal to the gang, steals Kaz's shotgun and blasts the shadow of Skullface. He is dead. Well, Ev- yeah. Okay, th- yeah. There we go. Yeah, he's dead, but everybody's pissed at Huey. It's like, we just like had to have a really deep conversation about what we're going to do regarding our vengeance. Huey, you just fucking took that from us. Fuck you. Uh, everyone's mad. They return to Mother Base. Um, bringing with them the remains of Sahelanthropus and the language parasites from Skullface. Huey, in secret, starts to work on the parasites, hoping to build them as a weapon to sell on the black market. Huey! Yeah. Eli, Psychomantis, and some of the child soldiers... Kill him, s- please! ...steal Sahelanthropus and run off. We do not see them again, and this is where some of that co- content becomes apparent, because there is... A cut content which people have managed to find in the game, uh, where you go to uh, find Eli in like a little jungle. You have a boss fight with him inside Sahelanthropus. Uh, you destroy Sahelanthropus once and for all, uh, and Eli is basically like "fuck you, father," like spits in your face and stuff. Um, that's not in the game. It's been cut. Now, so do- if it's been data mined, yeah, it's clearly been dev'd. Can you play it? Uh, no. People are able to find the cutscenes. That's it. Oh, okay. So people think there's no gameplay in it, just the cutscenes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And the cutscenes aren't fully voiced. It's like with stand-in voice actors and things. It's, yeah. Um, Weird. Now, you might think this is the end of the game. Our big bad is dead. Liquid Snake has run off to prepare for Metal Gear 1, uh, Metal Gear Solid 1, but we're actually only halfway. What? Act 2 is a bit of a clusterfuck. Um, so it feels aimless and is bloated. Everything I've described to you so far actually feels relatively structured in one way or another. I, I mean, outside Actually's the fact bloated. that Skullface seems like a wholly useless enemy and should have been... Yeah, he's just a nothing villain. What's his name? Uh, he's really charismatic too. He's really cool. It's just a shame they don't do anything with him. So um, in order to unlock the following story beats, which I'm going to describe to you, uh, you need to complete side missions, many of which are just old missions we've already done, but on a harder difficulty. So you need to go back, revisit old missions, beat them on a harder difficulty to unlock the next story beat. Yeah, that, that feels like just standard video games. Uh, that that feels not, pretty normal. It doesn't feel like a Kojima thing. I feel like Kojima wouldn't waste... Kojima doesn't waste your time. That's the thing. And this is a waste of time, a lot of this. Yeah. So, specifically, Huey's parasite fucks everything up. Um, It gets loose and infects about half of the soldiers on Mother Base, meaning they need to be quarantined. Snake learns that there is no cure, and in a horrifying scene, he enters the quarantine all masked up and shoots them all to stop it from getting any further. Wow. he He has to kill a bunch of his old men. He's furious about this. Um, but he's like, there's, there's only one way. And, and they discuss this at length. There's only one way. Kill the soldiers. Now, because he was a piece of shit, Snake and Kaz discuss whether or not they should kill him. Uh, Kaz is at the end of his rope. He's screaming and he's frothing at the mouth. He's clearly in a lot of just emotional pain having to witness his own men die. And he's still clearly, vengeance isn't working. You know, it's that sort of idea. Um, but Snake talks him down. He makes the call. They let him live they exile him from Mother Base. That was a terrible decision. Yeah. Um, now, I might be wrong here, uh, but I'm 90% certain that in Metal Gear Solid 2, Otacon explains what happens next. So, Huey uh, survives this exile, makes it back to America, reunites with Otacon, remarries, and adopts Emma, the, the sister. Oh, she's adopted. She's adopted. She's oh, okay. Otacon's stepsister. Oh, okay. Um, as Otacon grew up, 
he, <laughs> as Otto Kahn grew up, he ended up shagging his stepmother. Ash- ashamed, Otto Kahn ran away. When Huey found out, he killed the stepmother, tried to drown Emma Emmerich, and then killed himself. What? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's dark. What, 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 yeah. Why? Why? Yeah. That <laughs> that just feels that just feels unnecessary to have added. Yeah. Otacon tells tells Raiden all this. I'm pretty sure. Or tells Snake it in Metal Gear Solid too. Like this is what happened. Um, this is like my, who my stepsister is, and this is the dark backstory he gives. Um, but yeah, so Huey, piece of shit. Otacon, arguably, a bit of a piece of shit. Uh, shagged his stepmom, um, ran away as well. He, he never forgives himself, is the idea. Otacon never forgives himself for this. He thinks he gets Emma killed, all that sort of thing. Um, even though Emma gets killed by Vamp, it's a whole thing. Um, but yeah, Huey, piece of shit. Killed his stepwife for cheating on him. Uh, step- yeah, t- killed his wife, rather, for cheating on him. Um, and tried to kill his stepdaughter, just cause, and then killed himself. And sold out Mother Base. What the- And made the parasite that got everyone what? killed. No, what? 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 <laughs> what? Is that clear? Are you good? Are you good I mean, that? that's clear. It's just stupid. <laughs> so, yeah. So I should have told you that back in Metal Gear Solid 2, but there's so much going on in Metal Gear Solid 2 that I was like, I'll save it for when we actually talk about Huey being a piece of shit. Uh, Quiet, seeing the parasite spread to the shoulder, soldiers, thinks that she's responsible and leaves Mother Base. Is she, it contagious? Um, yeah, remember, you say the word, and that's how it infects people. Um, so she thinks that she's, she thinks that maybe she might have, like, sworn to her breath at one point or something, and it got to the soldiers. Uh, so she blames herself. Um, so, yeah, she runs away. Snake tries to convince her to come back, but it doesn't work, and Quiet disappears from the game. As the game approaches its end, we suddenly get the mother of all twists dropped on us. I want you to take a guess what you think the twist is. It's... Solid snake. <laughs> no. Um, I mean, j- judging by the fact that earlier I mentioned the fact that Big Boss does not have a horn, I'm guessing this isn't Big Boss. We are not playing as Big Boss. No. Yes, well done. So, this is also why uh, people might argue that Kojima hired Kiefer Sutherland. Because you're not playing as Big Boss. Is the argument, I think that it doesn't hold much credence. I think Ajima just wanted to work with Kiefer Sutherland and was a bit of a dick about it to David Hayer. But regardless. So it is revealed to us that Venom Snake is not actually Big Boss. But he's the doctor who was on the chopper when Paz exploded. Remember the doctor operated on her before the bomb went off? What? Um, yeah, so this is who we've been playing as the whole time. The doctor from Ground Zero. Just a rando. Yep. Ishmael from the start of the game is the real Big Boss. The man with the bandages on during his game dev yes during his coma the doctor was transformed to look and think like big boss through plastic surgery and hypnotherapy why to serve as a decoy for the actual big boss while he waged a covert war against cypher i mean i guess big boss was doing something useful yeah yeah but big boss was like getting ready for all but it's also like so kojima always promised like this is this will be the game when you see big boss as the villain that he is right um, and arguably you could. He took a guy, made him believe that he was the legendary big boss, and, like, basically ruined his fucking life. And we're about to see something else. So, Ocelot knew this. Ocelot helped all of this happen. Kaz did not. Um, oh. Yeah, he didn't know, and when he finds out at the very end, he becomes pissed, becomes disillusioned with big bosses, the real big boss's mission, uh, and leaves him to go and join... Foxhound, which is why he then helps Snake out in in Metal Gear Two. Okay, that still doesn't explain how Big Boss ends up being the Big Boss of Foxhound. Our final scene, which is a quick progression of time, uh, of Venom Snake looking in the mirror, and when he pulls away, he's soaked in blood, full of rage and hate and anger. You will notice that the horn is a lot bigger. Does he know that he's not Big Boss? Uh, uncertain. So the way we learn this is from, he he's like in here and through a cutscene, like he puts out a tape and the tape plays and it's basically, a, it, yeah, I think so. But it's basically a message from Big Boss basically saying like, look, just so you know, you're a decoy. Thank you for all your service. Thank you for your hard work. Um, he essentially like, after this time jump, um, the year is now 1995. Diamond Dogs has turned into the organization Outer Heaven. Big Boss no longer has any use for Venom Snake. 
Um, he's Big Boss is basically pissed off to the US. He's formed Foxhound and his Outer Heaven team and all that, um, and has sent Solid Snake in to take down Venom Snake. So the Big Boss you kill in Metal Gear One is at. This is why Big Boss sends you in to take down himself. No, Big Boss sends you in to take down his decoy, who has become a bloodthirsty terrorist, essentially. Yep. So. Yep. That makes some sense, but also brings in a thousand questions because... Do you think this is cool? Before you ask your questions. I think this is a really good twist. Yeah, I think it's a good twist. It's convoluted, but it's it's neat. I I think it's a good twist. I think it just adds so many unnecessary questions. Mm -hmm. Like what? I mean, I guess that does explain as well the whole why in MGS4 Big Boss is still alive. Fuck knows what Big Boss is doing the whole between... One and four, then. Yeah, it's a good question. It's uh, something that I would love to play a Metal Gear Six on to explain. Um, but yeah, it I think instantly makes Big Boss considerably less cool as a character, personally. Uh, In what way? I think this makes him more, uh, more gives him more depth because this is Big Boss. Arguably, this is Big Boss's big cunty moment. He fucking convinced a guy that he was, you know, he was never just a, a terrorist or anything. He, his whole plan was still out of heaven, still soldiers out borders. That's still see, what he but wanted. But that's the thing is, we never see any of that then. Yeah. Like, this whole time of us seeing this, like, I feel like all the cool shit should have been Big Boss for Cypher. Absolutely. Which I'm not sure if that was cut or if that was meant to be like an MGS6, but if it, this was meant to be the big ending. This is kind of my problem with the game. Is that whilst I, I really like MGS5, I think it might actually be my least favourite out of all of them, purely because, yeah, when all is said and done and when the credits roll, you go, that was really neat. Good gameplay. You know, comes some really cool story beats. Um, nice twist at the end. But this isn't the story that I want you to explain, Kojima. I want to know what Real Big Boss has been doing. I thought that's what I was getting. I thought this was going to be the Zero versus Big Boss game, which would solidify that rivalry for me and let me see it, rather than just be told about it. That would make Zero an actual enemy. Yeah, like, it is really cool. It's just a shame because this isn't necessarily the story I want to be told. Um, And if there is a Metal Gear Solid 6, I'd love it. The problem is that I don't really want to play a Metal Gear game, which Kojima doesn't lead, which is why we're going to discuss Kojima leaving Konami, because Konami still hold the rights. One of the really interesting things that comes from this is, uh, earlier on I referred to Volgan being fueled by revenge and hate and everything, so yeah. in the boss fight, you, you de- and I said that he had, gives you a particular look. That look is meant to really be confusion, because when, when you douse the flames, he sees clearly, and he recognises Venom Snake as not being big boss. So just, just because, right? So and he sees him, and it's almost like this, like, who are you? And then because of that... He's not got a quest for vengeance anymore. He's just full of confusion. So that's why he dies. He dies because the revenge goes away because he was being fueled. He's kept alive by vengeance. So, so he wasn't for revengeance of the real big boss anymore. He's just like, oh, this random dude isn't the guy I'm looking for. Guess I'll die. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Logic. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's why that happens. Um. But yeah. And then yeah. This 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 clip that I'm showing you now of him being covered in blood essentially takes place like moments before Metal Gear One. Solid Snake comes in, and then we get our 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 Metal Gear One. We come full circle. That's okay. I I, I really like that. That's very cool. Um. Leaves a billion questions about the real big boss. Sure. But... That's all the information I have for you. There's no more Metal Gear games now. So. If you have questions, I'm happy to try and answer I mean, them. <laughs> I don't really have questions per se. I mean, one, I do like the thought. Or, you know what would have made this miles cooler? Right. If through the course of this game, you had recruited all the big baddies from MG1. Yeah, right? That'd be really neat. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. if this would go. Because otherwise, <laughs> we'd have to imagine that those guys were just kind of wandering around. Uh, mother base this whole time. What you mean that you don't think that Dirty Duck is somewhere on the <laughs> on mother base? Shot Gunner. <laughs> Still the stupidest <laughs> names. So yeah, so there you go. Uh, this is the situation. Basically, Big Boss has been off like setting up Zanzibar Land this whole time. That's to give you a sense of where he's at. Um, but yeah, so roll the credits. Oh yeah, because Big Boss doesn't actually die. Die at the end mm. of MG One. Yeah, you that's fight him right. in MG2. Yeah. That's right. Um, for reasons unexplained, like he somehow survives, and you just think, because action game logic. But no, there's a reason. Uh, you do kill someone. Solid Snake does murder someone. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there you go. Um, now, before we close the book on this, uh, I want to tell you about Hideo Kojima's 
departure from Konami, uh, because this is insane. The worst as... company. Yeah, yeah. Uh, people who are patrons uh, will recognise a lot of what I'm telling you here, because I ran through it with the Nubis Humanus, um, my, my girlfriend, um, as, as a bit of an audio test. So feel free to skip this, guys, if you have, or if you want to hear Chase's thoughts as we go, feel free um, to stick around. First so, thoughts. Mm. I like those glasses. Uh, yeah. There are some very cool glasses. Uh, Kojima, though, looks like that kind of smug asshole that I would hate if I like went to school with him. I hate that by the end of this, you seem to be anti-Kojima because I So I'm here's the thing as well, boy. is because... Every other ge- Kojima game I'm aware of, mm. I hate. Like, Death Stranding. I have never played Death Stranding, and I never will play Death Stranding, because I hate the concept of I okay, hate the no. idea no. of Death Stranding. No. We can get into this debate this later. This is going to be a whole Lord Dump episode where I, inte- I fully intend to explain Death Stranding to you, uh, because that's going to And I'm going great. to hate it, because I hate... The idea, from at least what I know, it's essentially just a movie that you do vague playing in. No, Death Stranding's full of, like, and gameplay. Yeah. Everything, I, I've never liked a single thing I've heard about Death Stranding, but that's a whole other thing. That's fine. I just, I do not dislike Kojima, but he feels, few, one, things about Kojima that I can tell from this, he cannot create an overarching plotline to save his life. He makes games in insular pieces and then has zero issues in retconning. Okay, fair because enough. I can't argue with God, that. The amount of retcons in this series, and I can... <laughs> Yeah. God, every other fucking thing in the series is retcon, mm-hmm. and given I have such a hand wavy explanation that it's like if you were playing this game in sorely, it's like okay, whatever. But if you're like doing it like we are, where we're going over the whole thing in a chronological yeah. order, it's like God, this order of release. Uh, the I, storytelling yeah. is like I feel like it, it, because he's so pretentious, the like, he's hyped up as this, like, genius of storytelling, and he's not actually that good. He's not a genius of storytelling. He's, he's a really genius of good. game design, I would argue. He's more, he's, like, he wants to make movies, but ultimately, Kojima makes better games than I think he would ever make movies of. Also, uh, to, to pull you up on something, the, the, the hand-wavy way of, of explaining stuff away, that's how I've been doing it. The games go into laborious detail to explain a lot of the See, science behind it. I just don't remember it, and I don't have time I mean, for there's it. a lot of hand-wavy things that I feel like are just hand-wavy. Like, mm-hmm. the fact that we went from, like, 12 Patriots to 3 in MG4. Yeah, that's Just fair. as one example. Yeah. I um, feel like, despite the fact that, yes, there are a lot of retcons that are given in-depth explanation, but there's a lot that are just hand-waved. And I there's just think... so many retcons that it's like... I, I hope that by the end of this story, I'm about to tell you uh, your opinion on Kojima changes. So, there are numerous conflicting reports from insiders and journalists and interviewees and anonymous sources. Some of the stories we hear might be fake, but the sources all seem to have enough in common that we can develop enough of a through line for me to tell you today. Now, 50% of what I tell you might be fake, but I think that there's enough corroborating evidence here for me to to give you a solid explanation of what happened. The headcanon territory. We, we are, and I do want to make that very clear. Not that I'm going to get sued, not that Konami gives a <laughs> fuck about what I say, but some of this might be wrong. Uh, but basically, I'm going to tell you one of my favorite stories, my favorite theories. Okay. Based on pretty substantial evidence. So... During the development of Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain, uh, Konami decided to start doubling down on mobile games, microtransactions, pachinko, and pachinko machines, pachinko machines. Yes. Um, and loot boxes, all of this bullshit, right? It was... as, as stupid as it is, I would love to go play a pachinko machine just to make a stupid little, like, meme TikTok or something <laughs> like, oh shit, playing the new hit Konami game. Lord Dump on the latest pachinko machine. <laughs> Um, so yes, it, it was it was total trash, absolute garbage, but it was money making trash. Headlined by a game called Dragon Collection, led by this guy Hideki Hayakawa. All right, he's important. Okay, important, right, he's the ocelot. Right, pay attention to him. So whilst Hayakawa is making a shit ton of money for Konami, Kojima and his team were burning. Is it. he crying? Uh, no, no, I think that's just his, just the glasses, the tint of the glasses. Um, it looks like the, the expression on his face looks like he's crying. No, it's just, he's just like, mm, he's just thinking, right? So he's shut up. So 
Yes, this so, is him seeing his his empire burn before his eyes. Legit, right? So, so, so Konami are making all this money off the of mobile games, but meanwhile, Kojima and his team were basically burning that money, uh, Metal paying Gear for six the mobile game. So, paying for Kiefer Sutherland's salary, adding more and more detail to the game. Basically, in the end, Metal Gear Solid Five ended up costing eighty million dollars to make. Right. Okay. Um, Kojima heard on the grapevine that after Metal Gear Solid V, Konami were intending to strip back their single-player dev teams. So, he decided to use some of his budget during early creation of Metal Gear Solid V to develop a brand new engine for the Phantom Pain, which he called the Fox Engine. Whilst the Fox Engine was very impressive and graphically gorgeous, some reports say that Kojima purposefully made it extremely difficult to use so that he could secure a lot of his team's jobs in the future, because he heard that he and his team were essentially going to get laid off after Metal Gear Solid V. So he's like, well, if I make this flagship engine for you, which, for example, the new, uh, uh, what's it called? It's the, new, it's the soccer game uh, Konami release. Uh, Pro Evolution Soccer, right? That runs on the Fox Engine. Oh. Um, so it's like, I've made this engine for you. It's very difficult to use, but me and my team are experts in it so you have to keep us around if we know how to use the engine right so that was his plan um essentially the plan was was that konami in an effort to get some money back from the phantom pain's six year development cycle came to kojima and forced him to release the first couple of hours ground zeros as its own 30 dollar game kojima not happy about this didn't want to do it but in the end he relented. He was like, okay, fine. As long as you're going to let me make this new engine, sure, I'll carve out the first two hours and release it for you. Um, so, while all this was going on... See, I feel like any other company would just make that a tech demo. Mm-hmm. 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 But Konami wants to make some money because they're money-grubbing bastards. Whilst this was all going on, Hideki Hayakawa and Kojima would regularly butt heads. Kojima was once the golden boy of Konami. He made them billions of dollars. He'd been in the company for years. Hi, he was a very high up in the board as well. I think he was like executive producer of Japan. Vice president of Konami Japan was his role. He'd been in the company for years. He was one of their main stars, right? Yeah. Hayakawa was a newcomer. He wanted to take Metal Gear characters, put them into his mobile trash, specifically <laughs> Solid Snake. Oh, goody. Yeah. So it's reported that Kojima laughed in his face when he came to him and asked him to do this. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I want to put Solid Snake in my mobile game, which is going to be full of microtransactions and bullshit and going to look like Dragon's Collection. And Kojima laughed in his face. Um, he said no, and that he frankly believed that Hayakawa, what, what Hayakawa made was, quote, an insult to games. So a tense relationship formed, as you can imagine, right? I mean, um, he's, see, the thing is, he, mm -hmm. Kojima... Looks like a game designer. Mm -hmm. Hidekawa looks like a businessman. Yes. Which is very apt of the current state of gaming in the world. Particularly the current state of AAA Konami. gaming. And also AAA gaming as a whole, absolutely. Yeah, everything I'm saying here, it's important to know that whilst Konami are fucked and fuck Konami, um, we're going to notice some trends here where I think you could, if you were an insider at... A Ubisoft, hashtag hold Ubisoft accountable, um, or Activision Blizzard, hashtag, you know, hold Activision Blizzard accountable, etc, etc. We're now beginning to learn more and more about the seedy, dirty little secrets. And back when this happened, everyone's like, oh my god, Konami, right? Oh, what a bunch of fucking... And then suddenly it's becoming very clear that this isn't some, ooh, Japanese business, just gonna be the way it is. It's like, no, no, no. This is like every game business. Yeah, all your big triple E's. It's because um, yeah. all, all of them... Like gaming has stopped being about the gaming and has just become about the money. It's the same as like how movies, like half of movies created now are fucking Marvel movies and shit. Yep, yep, absolutely. It's, everything's about the money. And I love me a good Marvel movie, but the, the homogenization is, war, is something to be aware of as we move forwards, absolutely. And yeah, and Kojima, for all of the bullshit and all the wackery and all the silliness... Is a, is a guy who just wants to make stuff for people to enjoy. He doesn't give a fuck about the, the budget or the, the money or any of that. Kojima just wants to make things that people will love. That's always been his goal. So, yes, tense relationship formed. So after Dragon Collection made just a ludicrous amount of money, Hayakawa had a very quick meteoric rise through the company's executives. A lot of the senior leadership team did not play games and do not play games at Konami. I'm so curious mm. about... Because this seems very much on a trend of... In Japan, I don't know if you know this, in Japan, 
gotcha games these mm. these like mobile games yeah. with like the kind of uh lottery mechanics yeah good good, are good games yeah potentially if i'm remembering right the most popular genre of games mm. in japan and i have no clue why and this i'm curious if this fed that or if this happened because that was already an existing trend uh never knows best a uh, shout out to never knows best does a fantastic video where he explores the chinese game uh, development and he discusses as part of that the history of gacha uh, it's really interesting shit it's it's you know you could argue it's a little bit dry because it's all about businesses and stuff but he makes it very entertaining and he's is very well researched um but no yeah fuck gacha games hate gacha games i've i don't call them gacha games they're too nice i don't even they're good games <laughs> i do like some gacha games nah nah like nah. fucking like fucking i'm sorry i'm sorry you cannot bad I... any of the games i tell you about from oh, now on them no <laughs> like, you're not allowed to like i'm not saying that the dragon is good and can like say that genshin impact is a better game than any Metal Gear Solid. Oh, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going <laughs> to say that. I will say that I like Genshin Impact. Mm. I'm not going to say that it is better than like any of the like JRPGs, for example. They're a fucking poison. They but are I poisoning do, so many I toys do, game franchises. I like the games themselves. I don't like the business practice behind them. Fair. I'm, look, fine. Yeah. Like I'm Genshin not that, itself yeah. is. A pretty good game. I've heard that it's 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 surprisingly good for a gacha game with that. And very even explicit, even yeah. some more fitting, like Arknights, which is as pure of a gacha game as you get. I love Arknights. <laughs> That's great. So, Dragon Collection made so much money, right? Uh, the senior leadership do not play games at Konami. Uh, didn't even know the names. Do they in any? No, no but no, but specifically, like they didn't even know their flagship characters. Oh, yeah, fantastic. it's reported that numerous executives like didn't know who Solid Snake was. It'd be like working for Nintendo and not knowing who Mario is. You know, Solid Snake is like the Konami guy. You know what I mean? He's like, the the fucking guy. Yeah. Um, they don't even know who he is, so they just cared about the money. Uh, this is pretty much how Kojima was able to get away with all of his wacky bullshit for so long because his managers didn't understand half of what he said. They just cared about the bottom line. So if Kojima's like, oh no, yeah, Phantom Pain, I'm going to go out on a bandage face, I'm going to do this, I'm going to release it as a fake studio, they're like, Sh sure, is it going to make us 80 million? And he was like, yeah, yeah, of course it is. And he's like, oh, okay, fine, fuck it. So, yeah, they, they just don't care, they just care about the money. So let's jump to July 3rd, 2014. The Phantom Pain is about a year and a half away from being released. Hideo Kojima gets a, sorry, no, no, Hideki Hayakawa, sorry, gets a huge promotion to Vice President of Konami Japan, replacing Hideo Kojima. Oh my. Hideo Kojima is demoted to Executive Content Officer, a meaningless job title in the company structure. It means nothing. So the idea was like, basically, Kojima, go away, you can still make your games, but you're not involved in the decision-making process of the company anymore, Right? Kojima begins to see what's happening. He sees the writing on the wall, and so he starts to make plans. The first is to secure his legacy with Metal Gear Solid. Again, he'd heard rumours that Konami were wanting to kick him out and make spin-off money-grubbing titles in the franchise, so they did just that in 2018 with a game called Metal Gear Survive, which you might be aware of, I using the Fox that. engine. Uh, same map as Metal Gear Solid Five. Uh, it's a loot box heavy shit fest. You're oh, not playing a snake. It's good. got nothing to do with the canon, nothing to do with the lore. Uh, it's basically like a run and gun, shoot enemies, upgrade to your next gun, run over, shoot enemies, get to your next gun, right? My favorite. Yeah, so this is after Kojima had left. So the first thing that Kojima does is he puts strange, weird side mission into Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes, where you run around Camp Omega as PS1 Snake, as you're noticing here, um, and you need to find a bunch of graffiti of various Metal Gear Solid titles, right? So it's a really cute trip down memory lane. Um, you know, you find the Snake Eater one, you spray it, and you hear like, Snake Eater! And you're like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, Metal Gear, in it. Um, however, as you're doing this, you find fake Metal Gear Solid titles. For example, uh, Metal Gear Touch is, is one of the more obvious ones, right? What? So when you find these fake ones, uh, Kaz will buzz in on the radio and be like, you might be able to erase the markings, but the memories will never disappear, right? As in, you can re remove Hideo Kojima, but people know that Metal Gear Solid's his thing, his baby. He made it, right? How did he get away with this? Uh, again, they, well, Konami don't play the games. They don't test them. They don't care. Like, yeah. So they, they, just, <laughs> they just don't hear about it. Um, I mean, this is great. I love yeah. this. Oh, this but... is great. Uh, the second thing he does is PT. 
So there's a few stories around. Just yes. okay. Yes. So just as one question, mm-hmm. uh, because PT obviously was a Silent Hill thing. Yes. Was Kojima involved in Silent Hill as well? Is I'm, that is is that I'm his about to tell well? you what happened here? No, no, no. Kojima never made any previous Silent Hill, okay. uh, but it's always okay. been a passion project for him. He's always loved Silent Hill. Um, he's always wanted to be involved somehow. Okay. Konami okay. haven't made a new Silent Hill game for years. Uh, they've 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 sold the they haven't sold the license. They still have the license, but they've licensed it out to Western companies to make some really shit ones for the past few years. Homecoming Homecoming's not bad. It's not not great. Downpour, but none of them have ever really regained the greatness of one, two, three, and four to a slightly less. I extent. didn't even know there were new ones. There are new ones. One day I would love to walk you through one, two, and three. Um, because one and three are directly connected. Two is notoriously the best in the game, but has nothing to do with uh, series. But it has nothing to do with the others. Huh. I would love to because uh, it's a it's just a beautiful franchise. It's so good. It's pure Japanese horror. It will scare the living shit out of you. Even today, Silent Hill Two will scare the shit out of me. Knowing the story, knowing what happens, knowing the spooks, and it being on PS Two still scares me. But so Kojima just loved the franchise and wanted to resurrect it from the grave. Because Konami were doing nothing with it. They were turning it into pachinko machines, right? So there are a few stories around what PT is and what it means. I'm going to tell you my favourite story and my favourite theory, okay? So Kojima had been wanting to make a game with Guillermo del Toro and Norman Reedus for years. He had met with them, started to conceptualise ideas. They were very much on board to be involved in the next Deo Kojima game. And this is all back in like 2011, way before he was getting pushed out. He was like, one day I'll do this. Um, internally, Kojima and some of the Metal Gear team started to come up with some ideas about what a new Silent Hill game could be like, a beloved franchise which Konami owned and started to milk as pachinko machines rather than making more games. So at Gamescom, Kojima pulled one of his wacky stunts. Randomly, at the Sony press conference, we were treated to a quick trailer for PT made by 7780s Studio. Kojima had been working on the project in private, with a tiny team, while developing Metal Gear Solid V, all under Konami's nose. Okay? Konami didn't know anything about this. Not not even a whisper. Of course, PT got released. Everyone played it, loved it, and How unlocked... was he able to release... Like, was it released under Konami, or was it released wholly independently? Wholly independently. Okay. He came to Sony, and he said, Sony, um, here's PT. Uh, I'm, I'm making a new Silent Hills. Uh, under this new studio, 7780s, um, here's my trailer. And I would like to release like a demo and everything. And we don't really know what happened in that conversation. We don't know how much Sony knew. But from what I can gather, I think Sony knew about as much as Kojima told them, which was, I'm making new Silent Hills. Here's my teaser. It's not just a trailer. It's a demo. Isn't how this going to be fun? How did Sony not turn around and then go, you don't own the rights to Silent Hills? It's Hideo, honestly, it's Hideo Kojima. And I, 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 you, you under, I think you underestimate how much that name carries weight. If Hideo Kojima calls you on the phone, Mr. Sony, and says, hey, I can have a meeting, yes. and he explains. Yes, and that might be a thing mm-hmm. if not for the fact that Sony would be well aware that he was demoted out of his vice president position. Absolutely, it doesn't and change that a thing. from a business perspective, it should not be him directly contacting them. Kojima might have come to him and said, hey, I'm starting up my own studio, 7780s. But then he still says, I'm making Silent Hill. <laughs> also, Sony arguably didn't give a fuck because PT... Like, they probably, you know, because Sony do play games. Like, they're a bunch of executives as well, but they, they have people who play the games and stuff. Yeah. And they, they test everything before it goes live. So, yeah. PT gets really, people are like, this is fucking terrifying, this is brilliant, you need to, like, make this a big deal, right? So, Kojima did that. Uh, so, PT came out, everyone loved it, unlocked the Silent Hills trailer. Now, it's really important for me to highlight the... Okay, we don't really know how long he thought he had, but he thought he had a fuck ton longer than people it took for people to figure this out. Okay, I told I told the Nubis when we did this, it was about six months. I don't know for sure, but to un- do you know how to unlock the Silent Hills trailer? I used to, but it's been so long since PT came out that still I don't to remember. this day nobody has a step by step process for it. They are numerous, and some of them work, some of them don't. Some of them work sometimes, some of them don't. It's really, a, it's like, you know, turn around three times, go into the menu, go up and down, listen to the, listen for it to get to midnight. See, it's just... all sorts of weird shit. And people managed to get that trailer way earlier, earlier than he hoped they would. That's, it's still such a question of, if he literally put in a trailer saying Silent Hills yeah. by 7780 Studios. No, that's not what he did. A Hideo Kojima game. Okay, okay, Silent still, Hills. still, that's a Hideo Kojima game. 
at that point, I feel like Konami's lawyers would be going nuts saying, you don't own this. This is our property. Yep. So PT gets out. People play it. People are like, oh my god, this is amazing. New Silent Hill and Hideo Kojima. PT was fucking terrifying. This is all good shit. Like, you literally can't can't get better than this as a horror fan, a Kojima fan, or a Silent Hill fan. Um, so, while this is happening, um, it gets released, and everybody plays it, loves it, and at the Did, end... Could you forget that data miners exist as well? <clears throat> explicitly, no, because he, he, no, it wasn't revealed through data miners. You cannot data mine PT. It's like got millions of blockers, and it's, it's insane how he's dev- devised this game. It is pure luck that people were able to unlock this trailer. Huh. Like, it should not have been... I'm curious yeah. <clears throat> if they were legitimately looking for it, or if they... Yep. Just so happen to be fucking around and accidentally bump into it. I to this day still have not unlocked the trailer. I mean, I, it's not on my PlayStation you, anymore. I'm but assuming you've when tried. I had it. Yeah, I've played it. I've I've quote unquote beaten the game, but I haven't got past that final weird turn around four times, do this, do that, do that thing. I've never seen Silent Hills on my big screen as part of PT. Huh. Um so anyway, so so basically this gets out. Of course, everyone starts talking about it. Konami aren't that stupid. Alright? They know nothing about PT. They haven't approved Silent Hills, so this is not an internal conversation which has been had. Kojima has not pitched Silent Hills to them. <laughs> they basically don't care about this little pet project. They want Kojima to finish Metal Gear Solid Five now, not be planning for his next game. Wait, so they don't care that he's used their trademark? Don't care. They're like, Kojima, stop fucking around, just make Metal Gear Solid Five because they know they're going to sack him. They know they're going to get rid of him after Metal Gear Solid Five. But so they still don't shut down his use of their trademark? I know, like, they're mad about it. But they're not, like, they don't shut anything down. Like, we don't hear anything else about PT. They know nothing about this, right? They find out through gaming journalists talking about it, and they're like, what the fuck is this? Now, it's really important to highlight that what Kojima did is actually very normal. Um, so it's a regular thing in game development. Creative directors towards the end of a game's design, i.e. the last six months, will be involved with the game, but a lot of their job is done. It's all quality testing by this point. Yeah. So they regularly start brainstorming ideas for the next next big thing. Uh, there, there are other examples of this happening. Neil Druckmann of, of The Last of Us uh, with Uncharted 4. Like, this happens very regularly. It is an expected thing to yeah. do. Yeah. Kojima has done this historically in the past. This is not a weird thing for So him this to is do. Konami saying, you're getting fired after this game, don't work on your next one? And he goes, okay, well I'm going to make my next game sound hill, and I'm going to make everybody know that it's me, and everyone's going to put the pieces together, and you can't sack me without pissing off the fan base. Right? Right? So that's his plan. So, anyway... This is normal, right? It sounds like Kojima's kind of taking the piss here, uh, and, and the reality is... Konami... Out of curiosity, yeah. what did Silent Hill's like original writers think about this? Um, they fully support it. Okay, cool. I gather. The, I know that the lead writer of Silent Hill 2, specifically, because he's the one that I'm really interested in, um, really supported it. He was like, this is awesome. Like, okay, cool. Yeah, like if, if it's going back to Japan, absolutely. Great. Okay, How can cool. I be involved? Sort That's of fine. Thing. Yeah. That's fine. Um, so, so, yeah, so, so this is very normal. Konami did not really show an interest in his creative choices historically. He was traditionally left to just get on with it. This was totally normal for him. Um, however... Hayakawa didn't like this. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> right? <laughs> Any of it. Um, he could see it for exactly what it was. A big fuck you to Konami. Both he and Kojima both knew that Silent Hills wasn't currently being made, but if you release a badass teaser game, tell people it's coming, you can't cancel the project. So Kojima and his team's sort jobs will be secure. Right? <laughs> Right? I, I love this picture just with the way Kojima's just like fucking try me. <laughs> it's great. That is the most try me face. So there's also some great analysis of PT's hidden meaning, um, and I will link it below on the YouTube video. Um, and there are many who believe, myself included, that it's Kojima's way of getting around his NDA, his non disclosure agreement. Oh? Yeah. So it's all just wrapped up enough in metaphor that he can't get sued, uh, but there's enough information we can extrapolate about him being forced I out. I feel like he can still get sued for calling it Silent Hills, though. Eh, uh, he's, he's like, working on... Clearly, no, Konami doesn't care, but he didn't release it as a Konami project. I think he got quite lucky, and I don't, I don't know. I haven't seen his contract, but my assumption here is that when he got demoted to content executive officer, he's basically in charge of, like, 
games and the way it was worded and stuff. Like, he hasn't been sued, so I'm guessing somehow he's he's managed I mean, to get away with it. I'm that. assuming it's more just on Konami doesn't care. No, Konami fucking cares. Are you joking? Like, you're about to hear why they care. So, uh, it's all just wrapped up enough and meant for that you can't get sued, but there's enough information that we can, can figure out, like, kind of what happened next. So, for example, PT released 10 months after Kojima was fired. 10 months is a really important date in PT's oh, lore. He was... I didn't realize it was released after he was Sorry, fired. no, 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 sorry, no. De- demoted, demoted. He was okay. fi- he was forcibly okay. removed and put into a job which meant nothing. Okay, I mean, okay, if okay. I was, I know you could argue it's demotion, but like, if I got demoted from my job and got made a janitor, I would go home and tell Frankie, I got fired today and now they're making me the janitor. Like, that's, that's how I'd phrase yeah. it. But yeah, so my bad. So demoted, demoted. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so yeah, so it's a really important date in that game's lore. Ten months is referred to numerous points. Uh, that ten months prior to PT, the, the moment in the hallway, it's like ten months ago this murder happened. Ten months ago. <laughs> yeah. So explicitly it's hired, highlighted. This murder. <laughs> right. But ten months ago, it's also explicitly hired one of the radio things. Uh, you remember that, that day, right? The day you got fired ten months ago. It's pretty much word for word what I've just said. The phrase ten months ago, you getting fired, is used. <laughs> um, but yeah, the idea of like your life going to shit since you got fired. Um, also, a series of numbers, uh, 204863, uh, Kojima's birthday, the 24th of August, 1963, uh, are constantly referenced as a series of numbers in the game with a bad omen, i.e. like Kojima's Revenge, or, you know, you're gonna fucking get yours, you know, etc, 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 or, you know, whoever the numbers relate to, bad things are happening to them, etc, etc, right? So there's enough in here you can pull from. Like there's there's references to the Fox engine, um, the the baby. It's people assume that the baby, the fetus baby, is like the Fox engine because there's there's references to it around like them taking it away from you and that sort of idea. Um, some of it is very loose, but one thing is for certain: PT pissed off Konami big time, and it pissed off Hayakawa, and that's what's important. Six months before the Phantom Pain releases, Konami embraced their role as the villain in this story. Hayakawa is promoted to president of Konami, and coincidentally... Oh, what yeah. happened to the old... Did he step down, or was he step, fired too? No, nah, just stepped down. Like, he was like, yeah, this guy's making fucking shit tons of money with his mobile games, so let's give him the job. Um, and, yeah, as a result, Konami starts to just be the fucking worst to Kojima. The fucking worst. Um, first off, PT is removed from the PlayStation Store. Even if you downloaded it before, you cannot download it again. I think you've heard about that. That's pretty yeah. common knowledge. Good. Um, as a re- as a reaction, uh, people start selling PS4s on eBay with PT installed. Oh, I do rem- yeah. I remember that happening. <laughs> uh, these items start to be pulled from the website and eBay stops letting you list them. Presumably Konami got in contact. Um, then Konami begins to purge all upcoming marketing for the Phantom Pain of Hideo Kojima's name. Initial Hideo Kojima game not in the marketing. Oh. They remove him from the website. They remove any reference to him being in Konami from the website. He's still working there. Um, people react in the way that people would react with uh, hashtag a Hideo Kojima game starting to trend on Twitter because we start to see these weird changes and we begin to figure out what's going on. Uh, Silent Hills is cancelled. That's the announcement. Not that it was never being made, not that it's cancelled, but it's cancelled. Almost as a petty fight back to fans for their hashtagging and shit. They're just like, nah, you know what? You you thought you were getting this, and you weren't in the first place anyway. But now now we're going to say that it was coming, but it's not anymore, because you're being a bunch of fucking bitches. It's cancelled. Not that it was never being made. Um, And finally, the most important part, Hideo Kojima disappears. Wit? Disappears. We do not hear from him. Normally, in the run-up to a Metal Gear game or any game he's made, he'd be out on the circuit doing interviews and all sorts, but nope, he vanishes off the face of the planet. There's no reference to him anywhere on the internet. Uh, We later learned that Konami locked him in a room during the final couple of months of The Phantom Pain being made, uh, away from his team uh, for the last few months of the development. Wait, locked him in a room for months? For two months. This is concrete, this. This part is absolutely concrete. How is that legal? He would arrive at work, be escorted to the room, people would stand guard while he worked, he'd be separated from everybody, like, basically working out of a closet. Um, they'd escort him to the bathroom, 
Uh, they would not let him speak to his creative team. His phone would be handed in at the start of the day and, take, and given back to him at the end of the day. Any emails he sent to them had to be vetted. His phone was taken off. Talk, taken off him. That's what I've written. Um, so, yeah. Why? <clears throat> this doesn't seem legal. This is this 100% happened. This, this is from numerous sources from his team. A full book's been written regarding this part. I... I, I cannot comprehend how they were able to get away. I don't know what his contract looks like. Like, this argument. literally <laughs> feels like straight up actual villain shit. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Konami are the fucking worst, man. They're the fucking worst in this. They are the bad guys in this story. Especially because this absolutely feels like what Mr. Fucking President, whatever his name is, mm. just being petty. Oh, 100%. Everything that I'm describing all stems back from the day that he went to Hideo Kojima and went, I want to put Solid, Solid Snake in my Metal Gear game. And he went, ha, no. <laughs> Your games are shite. And everything has stemmed from this. It's a pure, like, rivalry turned villain. This doesn't even seem like a rivalry. This just seems like this asshole's petty as shit. He's, this guy's a fucking Metal Gear. Like, Hayakawa is a Metal Gear villain. This doesn't seem like a rivalry. Hideo probably sees him as fucking trash. Legit, yeah. Um, so so all of this happens. He gets locked away in his room. Um, people start to ask questions. Wait, so wh what about like when he's not at the office? Oh, you can contact people when he's not at the office. It's Like, like yeah. what do they think locking him in a room is going to do when he's at the office? Like, clearly, if he has enough passion for this game, he'll just have all his meetings outside the office. Yeah, he'll have like Facebook groups and stuff. Yeah, but it's Konami being Konami, right? So people start to ask questions. Because when you originally said it, I thought you meant they literally <laughs> don't let him go home. No, no. I thought no. they literally like, locked him in a room and did not let him Kojima, go home. You I thought are they con kidnapped yeah. him. Kojima, you are contractually obliged to finish Phantom Pain. It releases in two months. You come to work. You do your work. You, you fucking sit in this room. You finish the coding or, or the reviewing or whatever it is you're doing. You're not allowed to speak to people because we no longer trust you after PT. You're turning people against us. And Kojima was like, okay. And he got locked in a room with bodyguards. That's what happened. That is 100% true. I um, would have just walked out. Yeah. Everything I would have quit. Honestly, the majority of what I've said prior to this is a little bit like, did it happen? This we know for a fact happened. Jason Schreier reported on it. Out of curiosity, how do we know that? Like, did Hideo Kojima come out and say this? Or how no. did this get... Members of his team reached out to a couple of particular people, one of them being Jason Schreier, and were like, we would like to anonymously, like, tell you what's happened. And he was like, sure. And he wrote an article and a follow-up article and a final article after that. Kojima still to this day hasn't spoken about it, presumably because his NDA covers him till he fucking dies. You know, it's... Yeah, and again, we can extrapolate from you. People say that, and then we can extrapolate that information from the, the all the shit in PT. The idea of like being stuck in a room, being stuck in a hallway, ten months since you were fired. Like this is why PT people think PT is a bit of a cry for help. Like not necessarily cry for help, but like a bit of like, hey, I'm being forced out, and I need to like tell someone this is my way of doing that. Um, but anyway, so I'm not even done. So people start to ask questions, and Konami gives out an official statement, which is that Kojima is quote on vacation. While he's been locked in this room. Um, the Phantom Pain releases to 10 out of 10 reviews across the board. Strange, considering a lot of the fan base think it's great, myself included, but far from a masterpiece. Ah, but then, a few days after the reviews, we begin to learn more. Dan Dawkins of Games Radar wrote, quote, For fear of spoilers, Konami invited journalists to review the game at 5 at five-day boot camps tied to strict non-disclosure agreements. We would arrive, play between the hours of 9am to 5pm with no unsupervised play outside these hours. Someone would be there that entire time walking around, keeping an eye on you. Now, that is a maximum play time of 40 hours, assuming no stoppages for eating, drinking, stretching, or reality. Like, the fan and pain is at least... If you want to do, like, if you want to see a lot of that stuff, you're talking at least 80 hours. You could chuck 300 in there. I've chucked 150 in myself. I still haven't seen everything. It's it's nuts. So, yeah. So, so it was a boot camp review. Um, or longer, depending on your play style, the nature of your completion. He describes it as about a 35 to 50 hour game. I think that's fair if you want to beat the game. Um, you've been anticipating this game for five years and you have to beat this now in a realistic window of 30 to 35 hours. On one hand, you're finally immersed in one of the deepest, most experimental open worlds in history, overwhelmed by side missions, upgrades and secrets. On the other hand, you're haunted by a TikTok race to reach the end without knowing when that is so you can write your review of it. So naturally, a lot of these journalists didn't manage to finish it. So a lot of them were like, 
well, I've, I've played the majority of it. Look, what I've seen is great. It's Kojima's final game. It's 10 out of 10. And it is. The gameplay is a 10 out of 10. Story is not. So things like the weird Eli bit that we later learned was cut. Fair. You know, all this stuff, they, they didn't really even get the time to really register or digest that. Um, so for fearless spoilers, my arse. Uh, Konami did it because the game is incredibly well polished. How was he able to say that if he was under an NDA? This is this is like after after the NDA. So, no, no, sorry. So it was fear of NDA, as in that's what that was Konami's argument. Oh, uh, like there's spoilers in the game. We don't like, so we need to make sure you're in a boot camp, so you don't leak anything. We don't want anyone to leak the Venom Snake isn't big, big boss, any of that stuff. It was wank. It was all wank. It was supervised play to ensure this that. Is... Yeah, yeah. Fucking Konami's a bunch of fucking fascists. Mate. Oh yeah. So. Konami did it because the game is incredibly well polished and extremely deep, but it's missing chunks of the story which we've discussed. But when you get to the end of the Phantom Pain, even with the great twist, you feel a bit weird about how it ends. It does feel like there's stuff missing. Kojima, we're very much coming to the end here, I've not got very little left. Kojima begins to make plans to leave Konami and form his own studio. In secret, he starts to have meetings and calls with Sony executives, and as we know, eventually managed to start up Kojima Productions, and release Death Stranding. Infamously, so, yeah. Just to say this, whilst still from everything I've heard, mm. I still hate uh, Death Stranding. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this doesn't tell you anything like, about Death Stranding. Don't no, worry no, about no, that, no. Yeah. Just from everything I've heard, I kind of want to play it now purely as a fuck you to go to go nine. <laughs> there are also some really interesting interpretations of Death Stranding, uh, which clear, it seems to be very analogous with Kojima's how he fell, his state of mind. It's all about being isolated from people, wanting to build connections, uh, trying to make this one thing work. It's, 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 there's a lot of that in there. Um, I'm not really willing to go into that because better people than I have taken the time to do so. Uh, I would happily do that when I inevitably do a lore dump with you on Death Stranding because the story is awesome. One day. Um, one day. But so infamously, and we are coming to the end here, at the 2015 Game Awards, the Phantom Pain won Best Action Game. Uh, Kojima didn't get up to accept the award, Kiefer Sutherland did on his behalf. After Sutherland accepted the award, Jeff Keighley, host of the Game Awards, took a moment to address publicly why Kojima wasn't there. He told the room that Kojima had been instructed by a Konami lawyer that he would not be allowed to attend. The entire room started to boo in probably one of my favourite gaming moments ever, and that's where we're at. And again, half of this might not be true. But I'm willing to believe at least 90% of what I've just told you, based on the stuff I was looking into. And I will link, I will link, I will link videos below uh, explaining this in much more detail. Um, but these are the beats, the big beats. How insane is that? You're just stunned silence right now. I yeah, can't. I. Insane, right? Absolutely insane. I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of stuck on the whole room thing and struggling <laughs> to understand how that like even. Yeah. Is real Look, i don't understand japanese law but I'm, I'm, from what i can gather and i really don't understand japanese law or corporate law but what i can gather is that corporate law really kind of takes a lot of um priority if your nda covers something well uh, you know and it wasn't what they were, were doing wasn't necessarily i mean arguably it was illegal but you could get around it he's still going to work he's still getting paid still working on his project the only difference is that there have been fucking weird fascists about it who's the check he didn't actually officially get <clears throat> fired right like he quit we don't know. Oh, okay. We don't know. I mean, we, we know that they were going to push him out after MGS5. They know that they locked him in a room for two months. I would say that it's like, it was a, when I say it was a mutual thing, I don't mean that the two of them shook hands and left. I mean, it's a case of, we're going to fire you. And he's like, cool, I, I fucking quit. I can imagine it being Is one what's his name still president? Uh, Hayakawa. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because what I was going to say earlier is that, so I had an opinion earlier back when we were talking MGS5 that I I, I no longer really have mm. uh, in that Kojima Productions, from my understanding, is a Sony Direct studio. Yes, yes. Uh, they are they are one of Sony's official. There are rumors. I do Metal wanna... Gear is one of the most iconic franchises of all time. I could 100% see Sony putting forward the money mm. to buy the rights for Metal Gear yep. to make it continue. Yep. And my, my uh, old opinion was that I feel like that could happen, but that Kojima himself would not want to make anymore yeah. from all this. Now I'm kind of just thinking this asshole just wouldn't release him just to be petty. Completely agree. Completely I just think agree. this asshole just wouldn't yeah. sell him. Doesn't matter the amount of money just to be petty. Completely agree. Like I, we will talk about Blue Box in a couple of minutes. Out of curiosity, but after Kojima left, 
Did he put Snake in any mobile games? Uh, no, he didn't make Metal Gear survive. I think Kojima managed somehow to assure, ensure that like Snake wouldn't appear in any trash, which is why there's no Snake in Metal Gear Survive. There are no characters in Metal Gear Survive from the series. It's just a bunch of soldiers um, using the same gimmicks. I wonder um, how he managed that. It's insane. It's I, I don't know how he managed to get it. I mean, it might have been part of his NDA. Maybe it was like, look, I'll leave without a fuss, but here are my rules. It could be It could be anything. We don't know. But I completely agree. Hayakawa, based on what we've I've just described to you and what we've learned, not in a million years would he let Hideo Kojima make another Metal Gear game or a new Silent Hill game. Not in a million years. Um, which is why Blue Box... I mean, maybe if, legitimately, maybe if Sony came along and were like, here's a billion dollars or whatever, I don't know. But this is one of the many reasons why I think Blue Box is full of shit. Are we starting the Blue Box conversation? Let's talk about Blue Box. Let's talk Blue Box. (laughs) Right, so I'm 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 just going to... Just to open this up as well, I have not been following this nearly as much as Monty. Out of, like, pretty much all of my exposure to this game, I found out about this game from Monty, and all of my exposure has been via Monty just having a breakdown. Just the slow decline of a man Legit. following this project. And whilst I think this is absolutely fully Kojima fans uh, writing a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, no, no. We are in disagree. We've already talked about this off camera. We are in disagreement on this. So let me go on the record here and I will ve- I'm not going to also, walk you through I it. I feel like discussing this now dates the fact that we did have a week break in the middle of recording this because... We did have a week break. All the tra- all the trailer stuff happened between the release of the part one of this. Absolutely, and yeah. us now discussing this. So yeah, we had to have a week's break. Heads up, everyone. Um, <laughs> look, okay, I'm not going to walk you through all the blue box stuff. I don't have time for it, and I honestly don't want to. You don't I, have the patience. I don't have the patience. The for willpower. It. I would like to go on the record right now with stating up front, very crystal clear that. You are not Hideo Kojima. Uh, people <laughs> thinking that you are Hideo Kojima is bringing down the development of the Lord Up series. Fuck you, <laughs> Blue Box. Right, listen, the, the point of the fact of the matter is, that, no, I don't think that it's a Kojima game. I don't think it's Metal Gear Solid, and I don't think it's Silent Hill. However, however, what upsets me about this whole thing is that there is enough Enough bullshit, which Blue Box have teased us with, to make it a possibility. Now, based on... I don't think Kojima's involved at all. I think that's a straight up 100%. And the problem is that you remove Kojima from it, you remove all the wacky bullshit marketing's purpose. Because... I- I'm getting ahead of myself. Look, it's not Kojima. It's not Metal Gear Solid. It's not Silent Hill. I will happily be wrong. I will happily be wrong. But come on, people. If you're listening to this, based off everything I've just described to you, do you really think in a million years Konami would reward us with doing a Kojima-esque stunt to release one of the two games that he's wanted to do another one of, or related to him in any way? Of course they wouldn't. So to bring us all up to speed, Blue Box, just in just got somehow you've managed to avoid this. <laughs> I love the rage you can. S- hear oh my god feel the tension in this room is palpable (laughs) so blue box studios earlier this year released a trailer it was full of weird unity asset bullshit and it was narrated by someone who sounded like a first year arts acting voice acting student um which it probably was which it probably was um with someone walking through some woods it was all like ooh, and people immediately saw that and wrongfully went oh my god it's PT, right? It's Silent Hills. It's related to PT. Now, that was everybody's first mistake. Nobody should have done that. That was a stupid fucking thing. That was a stupid fucking thing to do. However, Blue Box then saw that and went, oh, you know what we could do? We could start trolling people and make people talk about our game, our bullshit game, which probably <laughs> won't actually come out. So what they did was they released a tweet, which was abandoned is not the real title of our game. Abandoned equals starting with S, ending with L. Now, that could be a million words in the world. That could be soggy wank towel, the game, <laughs> right? Could literally be anything. But naturally, myself included, when, huh, oh my god, that's Kojima-esque. That is Kojima. Eh, I feel like that's a bit too, like, at least off the way you've told me, that feels too blatant. Yeah, but don't forget, like, like, let me tie you back here. Phantom Pain wasn't that subtle when he was announcing it. Okay, but it was subtle enough. This feels very, this feels too obvious. Totally fair. Totally fair. I'm not arguing that there's that much credence to it, but it's enough to arch an eyebrow. Joaquin Morgan and the lines on Phantom Pain. Yes, you can absolutely 
figure that out with enough thought. Like, I completely agree. That that's a, but this that's, feels... that's enough though to go, huh? An arch and eyebrow, and then they go, okay, fine. So people start going, oh my god, it's Silent Hill, it's Silent Hill, it's Silent Hill. So then a blue box because they're a bunch of wanks uh, decided you know what we're going to do rather than actually release anything on YouTube just like a normal fucking game studio would we're going to do a Hideo Kojima-esque wacky plan download our 2 gigabyte app to to get the trailer live have it be crystal beautiful lovely so of course I'm like okay fine sure sure guys no problem download the app and then they come back and they go right now you've downloaded the app, which just had a language feature and the words check back soon. Um, I was like, okay, fine, no problem. Um, then you come and go, two weeks. Get, get two weeks, you know, app, app's live today, and in two weeks, something will be on the app which will be mind-blowing. Will absolutely just fucking rock your world. I was like, oh my god, okay. Did they say that explicitly? Yes, explici- or- explicitly not via... Yes, not the... I'm, I'm frothing at the mouth here. <laughs> the, the, the BB Studios Twitter didn't say that, but if you want a giggle, go and look at Hassan, the, the game, the, the creative director of Abandoned. Go look at his personal Twitter, where he is directly speaking and interacting with people. It was like, two weeks, don't be late, lol joke, but for real though, two weeks, right? Go, yeah, feel free right now, Chase, have a look at it. And and what happened was, people were like, is it actually, oh my god, I'm so excited, this sounds awesome, I can't wait. And he was like, I can't wait, it's gonna blow your mind, it's gonna be the biggest thing ever. Ever. It's going to be so good. He overhyped this game to make it sound like it was a new console release. This could not be bigger, right? So people are like, okay, fine. You're now making it sound like it's the biggest thing in the world. People then started being like, it's fucking Kojima. It's Kojima, it's Kojima, it's Kojima, it's Kojima. To which I went, huh, maybe we are getting slightly carried away. Hassan made a video on his Twitter and his Instagram where he filmed himself to say, look, hello, I'm a real person. I'm not Hideo Kojima. Please don't think I'm Hideo Kojima. Um, and you sound a little bit tearful. It was like, this is actually getting really stressful, a little bit overwhelming. We're just a small indie studio making a game who wanted to do something cool with a trailer. You are all now saying, I'm Hideo Kojima. Please, this is me. I'm not Hideo Kojima. So, of course, then what happened was, after that video, the, the, the followers split into two camps. Uh, people who were like, huh, maybe we should back off a little bit. This is clearly becoming quite a bit of pressure for Blue Box Studios. Um, my, that, I was in that camp. The second camp went... Nah, he's an actor. Hideo Kojima's behind the camera. He's filming it. He's filming it. It's totally Kojima. This guy's a fake. He's not real. He's not the real creative director. Those people, and I'm, I'm being very kind here, so sorry in advance if you're one of those people, are fucking morons. Because what happened after that was everybody did a little bit of digging, looked into it. People start to then go, oh, look, the website is only like a year old. And that means that it's been built by, it, it dates like a month after P- PT released. It's a Kojima thing. No, it's fucking not. That's an indie studio making a new website, right? And we all learn why in a minute, why they clearly made that website. Um, and then Blue Box Studios, <laughs> right? And th- that's fair enough. You were a fucking idiot for thinking that at the time. But I understand why you're clinging to that kernel of truth. I get it. I 100% get it. But then what Blue Bo- What did Blue Box Studios do, Chase? They uh, went off. I'm assuming the picture you're assuming. The picture. So. The picture. To give my my opinion here, because obviously saying the picture, people know what picture the fucking As, the solid of, snake of, picture with the eye patch. Of every single thing that was put out, my personal opinion as somebody who is not a big Kojima fan, so maybe take that with a grain of salt. Yeah, yeah. The only thing that feels leading to me, this picture does not feel leading to me personally. I think it's very leading. I think they know exactly what... This is my, this is my problem. BB Studios know exactly what they're doing. And I would like to highlight as well that on top of the picture, there's the blurred text at the top of it. Nobody can figure out what that means. Somebody has, stupidly, gone away and gone, oh, I mean, it says, welcome to Silent Hill. That's what it says. That's what the words mean. Now, again, I'd like to highlight that. Fair enough to that. It's a stupid thing to do, but fair enough to that person, because our previous Hideo Kojima wackadoo was where he had the title of a game, which was the fake title of the game, in a sense. And then above it would be some words, right? The Metal Gear Solid Five Phantom Pain idea. So it's fair enough to think that, oh, they've blurred it for a reason. It must... Why have you blurred... Why have they blurred the but, text? But again... If they're trying to hide something, this why doesn't have they blurred feel the text? as clever as... No, it's not. MGS5. Like, the lines, that's very clever. Blurring text, that feels so... That, that feels too boring it's for... It's so Kojima. amateur. It absolutely is. And this is the thing. And this is the thing that people keep, keep coming back to, which is... Kojima, it, it honestly has got to the point, right, so, so no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to save that moment, right? So 
the fucking, the, the picture comes out. To which I go, nah, look, you're not even helping yourselves anymore. And like, I don't think this is Kojima. But again, that 1% kernel in the back of my brain goes like, what if, what if, what if? What if Sony managed to buy it and have now leased it out to Kojima all under the radar? What if this is the case, right? A little part of my brain goes, maybe, 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 maybe. So then, then, then what happens is <laughs> the day of the app trailer comes out. And 15 minutes before the trailer, whatever it's meant to be, is meant to go live, they release a GIF. A four second GIF of what looks like the back of James Sunderland in high res wearing his, I, I was gonna say iconic, it's not that iconic, but his green jacket that he wears, literally it's, it's whoever it is, is wearing the same fucking clothes as James Sunderland, the main character of Silent Hill 2. So now people are going, right, you've now teased Metal Gear Solid and you've teased Silent Hill. What this is, is a full bone project by Sony to remaster the original trilogy of Metal Gear Solid and Silent Hill's original trilogy. <laughs> this is what this announcement is going to be. It's a big, bombastic, mm. here you go, we've bought the property from Konami and we're starting off by remastering it. That's what this is. And, and that's what people assume. I think that's a silly thing to assume, mm. but fuck BB Studios for playing into that because they know what they're doing by this point. Fuck BB Studios, but I like I don't I don't have any 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 sympathy for people that are far down the rabbit yeah, hole here. I, I don't. But fuck BB Studios feels... for signing that flame. It's annoying. It's just annoying. The whole thing is annoying. So so the day the day the app the, the trailer is meant to come out, uh, I'm sitting there because of course I fucking am at eight o'clock and the Nubis is next to me. You were texting me frothing at the mouth. And I was like, okay, right, uh wh where's the okay, where's the trailer? Eight o'clock, eight o'clock, half past eight, no word. Quarter to nine, they make a statement saying that there's some fucking shitty bug on their shitty trailer app, which they didn't need to have in the fucking first place. Because again, if this isn't Kojima, there is no reason to build this app. You are not big enough to pull in the gravity here. I understand that it's all for people to talk about you, but the purpose of the app is now null and void because you fucked the launch. So as if I was Hassan, and if I was in charge of BB Studios, and I hope you're listening, Hassan, you won't be, but fuck you. What I would do is, very simply, I would go, right, we fucked up the app. Here's the trailer. Here is the name of the game. Please stop thinking we're Hideo Kojima. Here's the name of the game, real name. We open up pre-orders tomorrow. Boom. Please stop thinking we're Hideo Kojima, we're just in the studio. If you have the app, stick with us for a couple of days, we're gonna fix it. But of course, no. That wasn't that wasn't good enough for the fucking the fucking abandoned bait See, patrol. I'm not done. Me but and jump in. <laughs> me and Monty have differing opinions here because I am so as of this point, I was still very much in the camp that one, I'm I'm a software developer yes i think i i have sympathy for issues that happen right before you go live because fuck they happen far more frequently than any of us in the industry would like to happen uh and i personally think that somebody trying to do something outside of just releasing a trailer and going there you go is cool but even, if, but even if it ends done. up being even if it ends up being that the app literally only has a trailer on it i'm that's like that's all it is okay it's, it's okay, just yes, yes, a new yes, format for the trailer it is but I'm still like, okay, it's different enough that whatever, cool, it gets some hype around it. I was still on board with it all until that picture started circulating with the history of this company. Yeah, we're going to get to that. I'm not Which done we'll, yet. We're, we're not there we'll yet. Get, we'll get there. So so, so I was like, right, okay, fine. Um, but okay, question for you then, Chase. If yes. you were Hassan, the software developer who's created this whole idea, yes. right? And you are sitting there and you're going, right, guys, are we ready to launch with our new app? And... I'm in the corner and I'm like, uh, Mr. H Mr. Chase, there might be a problem with the app. And he's like, great. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take to Twitter and I'm going to post the four second GIF of clearly a Silent Hill reference and say, are you ready? 15 minutes before it's meant to go live. Would you do that? No. I feel like before, before 15 minutes before the app goes live, you'd know if there's a problem or not. Yeah, probably. So probably. I'm, fuck them. I agree. I agree fuck there. Them. I agree there. Shite bags. Hate them. Him. I, that that said, <laughs> simultaneously, what I can simultaneously imagine, uh, because again, as somebody who works in the industry, this has happened to me mm. in past personally, is they thought everything would work until they pressed the button. Right, but I still want to know what the fuck didn't work, and this is my theory now. Right, this is so, so we we'll hold the hold the thought for a sec. So so nothing happens that day. So of course the the the, the blue box studio people are all like the, the 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 people who are following the followers are all like, oh yeah, well PT's anniversary is in two days, huh? <laughs> They're gonna release it on PT's anniversary. P 
PT's anniversary comes and goes and fuck all happens. We're all uh, still no, waiting. Koji- three days. Kojima made a little fun post. Oh yeah, no, uh, yeah. The, the the morning of PT's anniversary, Kojima does a fun <laughs> because Kojima is so aware that this is happening, thinks it's fucking hilarious. Takes to his Twitter with a picture of his fucking him in a meeting, being like, "Oh, I've got a big meeting today. Big things are happening." And the whole point is that. Kojima thinks it's funny. Kojima is not involved. And Blue Box Studios are just milking this. And the problem is, is that if it was any other fan base, I think it would be different. But for a fan base that has, has been blatantly ignored for so long, got their hopes up with PT thinking it was going to be the new Silent Hill game, and then it turned to fucking dust in their mouths. And Blue Box Studios, the wankers, are coming over going, hey, you want this new game? And like, yes, please, yes, please. You want it to be Silent Hill? Yes, please. You, oh, you maybe want a Metal, Metal Gear Solid? Yes, please, yes, please. Uh, it's not, it's none of that. Uh, thanks for the fucking investor support. <laughs> Fuck them. They're absolute pricks. And that's the problem, is that you're, there's still that 1% chance that it is. But when I say it's 1%, it is 1%. It's not him. I don't even but there's still 1%. the chance. And now we're learning, of course, Course, as we assume. Sorry, no, no. Then, sorry, yesterday, dating this, yesterday, um, they, they released it goes the live. trailer. It's live. It's four seconds. It's the gift that they released. That's it. Noth- nothing else. No information. No title reveal. And th- my theory about this is very simple. The bug, whatever the bug is, is still there. They have not managed to fix whatever the problem is, but to placate people, they have been like, fuck it, make the app live, stick the four second gif on so there's something on there to get people talking again, not just be mad at us. But all it did, naturally, was make everybody fucking mad at them. So, it is what it is. Fuck Blue Box Studios. Um, They're a bunch of pricks. If it is Kojima... This is the point. I actually think... It's cause the, pe- the the people who are like, it's fucking Kojima, it's still Kojima, it's still Kojima. No, people who do that, it betrays the idea of like what Kojima does. He doesn't fuck with you like this. Like he plays with you. He doesn't waste your time. Like Phantom Pain is a perfect example. We're, we're going all the way back to Metal Gear Solid 2. Like, so, so, so in marketing, really important thing in marketing is that there's always something called an offer of value in your marketing. You always need to provide value to someone. You can't just market to them. What Blue Box Studios is doing is they're marketing to people based off of hype. Kojima markets with value. Metal Gear Solid 2, you think you're going to be playing as a solid snake, you turn out playing as Raiden. But you get value in that because you get an hour and a half of snake and the snake comes back later as a character. There is value. Phantom Pain, it wasn't just the name. We got a four minute cinematic trailer with legitimate, honest to God, cutscenes from the game that were in the game, but they were just framed in a way which made it look like it had nothing to do with Metal Gear. Kojima likes, Kojima likes people figuring out his shit. But he also likes people to feel clever doing it. That's the joy. There's nothing joyful about this. It's embarrassing. And as a result, it, it's, it's, it's insulting to think that Hideo Kojima would behave this way. Because he wouldn't. Yeah. Death Stranding is a perfect example. And this is where we're going to begin to close off. Death Stranding is the perfect example. Kojima released the trailer for Death Stranding and it was Norman Reedus on a beach holding a baby. And everybody went, what the fuck is going on? And <laughs> legit. And, and when you play the game... It's about Norman Reedus being on a beach holding a baby. Like, it's it's pretty, you know, and, but he gives you something. He gives you a trailer. He gives you a title abandoned with a blurred image. It's just fucking insulting to Kojima to think it is him. It really is. And honestly, at the risk of being Mr. Fucking Gatekeeper, I don't care. At this point, if you still think that this has any involvement from Hideo Kojima, aside from that 1% kernel where you go, what if, what if, what if, and I understand, I understand being excited about this still, just in case. If you actually are arguing with people, like I saw people doing last night, that this is a Hideo Kojima game, and people need to just have faith, and people don't have faith in Kojima, no, 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 you don't have faith in Kojima. Like, you, I'm sorry, you're not a Hideo Kojima fan, man. If you think that Hideo Kojima is capable of a fuck-up of this big by an indie studio where it's been proven time and time again that it's like fake games, fake games, fake games. People are like, the studio just started after PT. Yeah, because they thought they would make a game like PT. But they didn't for five years. And now they think they've figured it out and apparently they haven't because they can't even launch a shitty trailer app. Please, please, just, my God. That's a sour note to leave it on. A a positive note to leave it on would be if you are interested in PT, if you've made it to the end of this, which looks like it's about a five-hour video now. Hell yeah! (laughs) 
if you have made it this far and you are interested in PT, my biggest advice to you would be this. If you have a PC or you have a PlayStation, please download and play Visage. V-I-S-A-G-E. It is 15 quid right now. It is the PT game that you want. It is PT for seven hours with a story. It is made by an indie company. It is some of the scary stuff I've played in a long time. Um, it's a little bit jank. It's got the indie. It's got the indie magic, is the way I describe it. You know, it's made by an indie company, but the atmosphere, the graphics, help for for a lot of the the exploration is fantastic. Please download and play Visage, Visage rather, not Michelle Visage like the drag queen. Um, <laughs> you owe it to yourself. Um, Chase, do you have any final thoughts? I think I'm uh, I'm gonna go pick up uh, Death Stranding. Cool. I would throw, like you before we go. Last throw thing my throw my boys some throw my boys some support. I would like you to rate rank rank the Metal Gear Solid games. Okay. All of them. Metal Gear right through to Metal Gear Solid Five. Okay. Uh, fuck this. Oh, again. There's been a week between recording. There's been a week, so it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Um. Okay. You're willing to start from the bottom. Is that easier for you? From the bottom, probably. Fuck. Uh... <laughs> I didn't think this would take you so long. I'll well, cut out a lot of the odds. I feel like I feel like uh, this is this is going to make people angry no matter how I do it. No, um, it's fine. MGS two, if I'm honest, feels like my least favorite. That's fair. It feels overly convoluted and not in a smart way like some of the other convoluted games. Cool. Um. Also, yeah. Uh. After that. Pr- if, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm avoiding putting MGS5 low, but Why? probably MGS5. Okay, it's okay. It's because I do really like a lot of, like, the overarching Laura elements. Like, the fact that it is, like, how th- this tyrant big boss, quote-unquote, unquote, ended up in MGS. Like, as much as it is not yeah. the big boss story that I want, it still explains enough cool lore that I do quite like it. But I don't like the storytelling style, like you said, at least from you describing it. Yeah, I'll probably put that one next, though. Okay. Um, I'm wary that Metal Gear 1 and Metal Gear 2 are still sitting, like, not at the bottom. That's interesting. I thought you'd so, simply just go with the first. Uh, Metal Gear 2 is going to be my next one. Okay. Uh, because, frankly... <laughs> not Metal Gear 1! Okay. Well, no, because, frankly, frankly, like, Metal Gear but 2... But Metal Gear 2 has Running Man! <laughs> it feels inconsequential, though. Yeah, okay. Like that's it, fair. it feels very inconsequential in the grand scheme of things. Like, yeah, Big Boss quote unquote unquote dies, quote unquote unquote. Yeah. But like I'll put I'll, I'll put Metal Gear One next. Okay. But I'll put Metal Gear One next. Uh I, like I, I feel like it's very middle because it's not by any stretch a bad game. Mm. And it's very iconic. And it's very so- like it, it feels very solid in that it doesn't try to do too much. Like it feels like it knows what it wants to be. It's like very happy and trying to be the small, very solid game that it wants to be. Cool, I'll take and it. And it's 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 a great starting point. Uh, after that, let's go. Which ones have I not done? I've not so done. So you've got solid one, solid three, solid four, and Peace Walker. That's all you've got left. Oh, I fucking forgot about Peace Walker. Yeah, yeah. Everybody kind of does. Uh, it's a shame. It's just a lovely wee game. Um, <laughs> j- j- where where the fuck would I put Peace Walker? Actually, would you put it above or below one, three, or four? Uh, probably below. Hello, so that's next? Uh, because 1, 3, and 4 are definitely my favorite ones. That's fair. Um, yeah, so P- Peace Walker's next. I don't have many massive thoughts about, like, eh, well, yeah, P- Peace Walker's really cool, actually. I do really like a lot of Peace Walker. Yeah, I mean, you, you're, you're in the top half now, so it yeah, mean you don't like uh, it. Yeah, well, actually, actually, you know what? I would put, I would put Peace Walker above MGS1. So, wow, really? Yes. That's interesting. Very interesting. Because MGS1 still feels very simplistic in its story. Yeah, that's like, why I like it. Well, see, see, that's not a bad thing by any stretch. That's not a bad thing by any stretch, but you know, me personally, it's the whole reason that I do this show with you is I like convoluted stories. Yeah. And yeah. I like stupid overblown more. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, like, I think it's it's such a solid game. Like, it is a perfect solid game. It doesn't do a massive amount to make itself stand out. Like, it doesn't really stand out. Peace Walker stands out more than uh, this does in every way. Okay, do you th- do you think, honestly, I'm not asking you to re- remove them, but yes. do you think that's because of the week-long break? Because you heard about Peace Walker today, 
You heard about MGS1 no, last no, week. No, no. Fra- I, I, I don't think. Because remember going into this all, MGS1 was the one that I knew the most about its plot. That's a good point. That's a good point. And yeah. MGS1 still, it feels so solid, but it does nothing really hey. stands out. At, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> it, nothing really stands out as being particularly special mm. about it. Like, it feels like this is your groundwork to do the rest of a series. Okay. Are you putting Peace Walker above this then? Yes. So yeah. then all you have is three and four. What's the order? Four, three. Three, three, three is the best one. I'm glad that I... Three is... Yeah, yeah. Three, yeah. three is the best one. <laughs> three is the best one. Three, three is the best one. Three is, um, three is the best one. Uh, best enemies, best yeah. uh, Metal Gear. Uh, do this dick out. Uh, <laughs> it's good stuff. Um, yeah, so uh, if you want to help the show, uh, you could comment below and let me know what your favourite Metal Gear is. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... Kingdom Hearts next?